Whitebeard Pirates because I've always talked about this how you know Whitebeard had his whole fleet of like separate pirate crews that yeah. weren't underneath him but that just flew underneath him and we have the same thing with the Revs except you substitute that with entire nations right yeah. like you add our, like Arabasa had how many million people in there and you add a, a whole army of them and then they all sail to the final war you got the entire planet like half of them fighting you, for you you know you not to the sub groups right now it's with sub as well yeah. on too, I feel like I feel like a lot of you guys are bringing up a good point too of like when the timing of these fights are going to happen too right yeah. like in terms yeah. of if these fights are all going to converge or if it's going to turn into the final war i think another thing to bring up since we were just talking about film red too in terms of things that might be brought canon in the manga is there's that moment towards the end of film red where you get usap and yasap using like Rainbow. observation hockey yes. to sort of like communicate with each other and i do yeah. feel like that's a little bit of a tease of what we might expect from the final war right and that potentially yeah. the final war isn't going to be in one location right we've got kuma at the red line right now i just gotta bring Barjola. that up yeah you've got yeah. you've got full of Led Island, you've got Garp, you've got Blackbeard, you've got Law, you've got potentially like Laughtail itself. Like, there's all these different islands that they could have this massive fight take place that spans the entire world, and yeah. everyone could communicate using their advanced observation hockey, right? You got like yeah. Usopp representing for the Straw Hats, you got Yasop representing for, um, you know, the, the Red Haired Pirates, you got Katakuri representing for yep. Whole Cake Island, and they're all just using their observation hockey to sort of communicate on all these different fronts. I think that'd be fascinating. Who needs to yeah. bush anymore? We love the You just level up. It's the same thing with like Augur has the teleportation fruit now, so it's like, yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's Blackbeard's all. fighting Law, so maybe. Maybe he'll go back to Hachinosu. We don't know the extent of that warp fruit yet. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, going back to like the dragon thing though, because I know it kind of ties back to with him a little bit, because we're still kind of waiting on that moment when dragon's actually going to have like you know to clear the war and stuff. Um, because we're talking about like you know if who's going to showcase like into the world and stuff. Like you know how is that going to be known to everyone? Is that going to be the moment where when dragon invades, like he's secretly going to have this Denden Mushi over there to like basically declare war and show that hey there is this king of the world and stuff and saying well I'm going to take you down and that's what kicks off the war. Or is there going to be like another moment that that is actually going to do that? Well, you know, going back to the parallels with with Marineford, then the the revolutionaries would play a sort of buggy role. Buggy traveled with the Straw Hats, so you could see, um, you know. And to continue my thought from before, you know, Blackbeard has Kobe, right? So that's that's a similar setup to Ace's execution, I would say. Uh, Garp then would be the Whitebeard pirates who's coming to rescue their friends, and then it gets complicated really fast. Maybe the, you know you could even consider the revolutionary playing playing role of Blackbeard, um, where they see an opportunity to sort of take down world government in, in the chaos in a kind of unexpected way i don't think that people would expect that but it, but it could be the case i just um, want to clarify you just made a parallel dragon buggy parallel dragon but i just want yeah. okay. so, so, yeah i know yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I I mean, like, yeah but i mean uh, buggy was the one who, who, who uh got all the cameras going and showed everybody what was happening behind the scenes right and that's yeah. what we're kind of expecting from the Revol revolution army maybe, maybe that's dark the world government secrets and at some point they have to reveal you know, Imagine they, get, they yeah, this is camera so, on me i feel like the way the guard plugs into this is that it's because it, the final war obviously luffy has a vendetta against the world government too dragon has one garp probably has one as well oh, if we've seen you know his history after maybe so what i was uh thinking because of all of this is that you know how like we recently learned with ohara that the burning of ohara is what motivated the form formulation of the revolutionaries and the burning of ohara is the flashback that preceded luffy declaring war himself on the world government in in Anya's lobby well maybe this goes three ways maybe because saul was garp's friend aokiji was garp's friend the favor that aokiji spoke about to luffy in Long Ring Long Land said, I owe Garp a favor for something a long time ago. Maybe Garp was who helped him cover up Saul surviving. And Garp is working also with the revolutionaries secretly to plan a coup. And I think yeah. Garp, Dragon, and Luffy are all going to have to come together in the final war. So it's not going to be like a one-to-one -one with Whitebeard, but I can see the revolutionaries working with Luffy, working with Garp, and each of the monkey family members are, are leading one of the main factions of the world, the revolutionaries, pirates, and marines, all against the world government. So that's not right. So I, I'm, I'm liking yeah. this idea of tying the revolutionary army and and you know just saying who the white beard pirates are going to be because i've always felt that luffy and his grand fleet really should take the place of the white beard pirates yeah. you know and, and and basically be that role but it also always makes sense that everybody that luffy's helped in any sort of way over the course of the story who he's liberated you know comes and just we have this massive push if the world finds out about the void history and everything like that, if we do the internet like Vegapunk wants to do and we're able to spread this idea of what the void history was, we can get a collective group of the, you know, anybody could become the Revolutionary Army, right? You know, yeah. we saw this in the Flame Emperor chapter, you know, at the end, that islands are already starting to rise up. So from that perspective, that could also happen. Uh, I do think that this Battle Royale that Oda is essentially like referring to in his jump message, I think that that's going to be at Eldash. I think that mm. that I think that what he could be referring to there is essentially like the One Piece version of Ragnarok, where we'll we'll get you know maybe something that's not necessarily you know marine related unless they find out that Vegapunk Saul or you know exactly you know all of these forces are there they may just stay off to the side like they did at Wano. But if we could get a situation where it is you know Luffy the Kid Pirates uh, 
Big Mom returning because she has so much, uh, you know, uh, stake in, you know, an Elbath. Uh, Blackbeard pulling up if, you know, if Pudding becomes relevant in any way to uh, Elbath. And Shanks has been drawn to that arc. You know, it could be a way for Oda to just culminate all of that. So maybe the final war isn't actually, I mean, yes, we'll have a war against Mary Joa, but maybe one of the, the, the real pirate war against pirate. Pirates will actually happen at Elbath. And, and for the, for the I really like Google that well. idea. I Go would ahead. really like that idea. It's just I'm just a bit skeptical. Like I'm just a bit, um, I guess, skeptical of as to whether Oda will do two big fights now. The way that I see it, I just feel like there's a bit of a timeline that's been placed on him, and he's. It seems like he's working towards a timeline, and I don't know whether that has that leaves room for two major wars as much as I would love to see something like that. Well, I think it, it, there's, also, there are two major wars that have to happen because it's the war against the pirates and piracy, you know, so that Luffy can become the pirate king. But then there's but also then the, 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 the but we have to also free the world from this oppression. So but no matter what, we have to. Yeah, 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 that's what I, I was thinking. I think that's, that's the case, reason. Right? I think reason they could all be happening. Yeah, they could just put yeah, them together. Yeah, and it's totally. just a free yeah. fall. Yeah, right. it's just especially considering, like, and I'm sure Artur knows the exact quote, but like that thing that Oda said where he mentioned, like, oh, this is going to make Marineford look like a little baby game or like something. A like a pool or something like, 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 like that. Quote yeah. from Oda? I know oh, you yeah. know this. <laughs> so, it's playing in a sandbox or something. In That's his, it. Yeah. Uh, Chum Fest 2018 message, he said that the lurking legend would be introduced in 2018 in the manga. And it was it would be someone really powerful who was connected with Whitebeard and would be the strongest enemy the Straw Hats would ever face, and that it would make Marine Corps look cute by comparison. So that's likely either rocks or in. And there that's you go. probably okay. talking about the final saga because it's when the Straw Hats will face this looking legend and that will make Marine Corps look cute by comparison. Which yeah, a lot yeah. of people mistook for one which is not the case. It's specifically talking about the battle of the Lurking Legend. Yeah, I had Yes. Yeah, if, if we're looking for a place to sort of make a, a true battle royale with all the factions involved, I think that right now we definitely need to be wondering whether or not this battle occurs before the One Piece is found so that we can end it around that time. And something like Punk Records could make the message spreading, uh, et cetera, that sort of thing, uh, a lot easier to accomplish now that it's being grown up. But, you know, I, I like the, the parallel personally that, you know, before in Marine Ford, it was the pirates trying to rescue their, their Nakama from, from the government. And now, I mean, you have a setup of, of essentially the thing reversed, you know, where, where the pirates, Blackbeard has taken the Nakama of the Marines, Scarf is going after there. And, you know, it's right now it's totally plausible that literally every faction in the story can converge right now and essentially become uh, everyone's looking for the One Piece sort of thing um, because uh, it's it's going to turn the world upside down. And so yeah. the, the final war does not have to, to be fight. at Marajo. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah. If I could I put a the last could... deal for me would be the one ideal thing, or like you know even like before we get there, it just depends on when we actually get the last like pond and stuff. Because I do have this weird feeling that like if the straw hats were to get them somehow, some way, everyone's going to find out about this, and that's probably going to lead to everyone just battling it out until they get to the straw hats, and then let's say it's Teach that ends up meeting with them yeah. at Lap Tail. That's when they have the fight, find the one piece, and it's like wait a minute, you know what? Let's chill on this war. Let's direct it to somewhere else where it needs to be, and that's against the world government because we just learned something that's uh, very important to save the whole entire world. Yeah, the only thing that I think that we need in addition to this is the ancient weapons need to become relevant. So, like something like the Marines on their way yeah. here uh, oh, yeah. get get uh, a futon uh, from Wano. You know, Wano gets in danger, and that, the whole thing with Momonosuke comes back up. And then you need something with the fishermen. Something happens with them. Some drama with, with Shirohoshi. You know, uh, but I think that that's totally accomplishable on on our pathway through Elbath and then what comes from that. Yeah. I'll be real with you guys. I don't think Blackbeard is going to go to Laugh Tale. I don't think there's going to be a conflict with him at Laugh Tale. I think the conflict right now for the One Piece is going to be related to Shanks. Because Shanks right now said he's going to he go is on the get the he One Piece. Go get it so too. Blackbeard, as far as we know, Blackbeard is trying to live up to Zebek's legacy. Zebek did not want to become King of the Pirates. He wanted to be King of the World. The world so yeah. Yeah. it makes the most sense to me. We saw Blackbeard talking about like, oh, who's going to who's gonna betray who? Like, what's going to happen? Everything's like coming together. It's going to become some great war, of, you know, for supremacy or whatever. He was talking about that on Full of Lead. Maybe Blackbeard's plan is to he's anticipating this war and maybe he's letting it play out just like marine ford and then right at the end he's going to swoop in and then do his thing yeah. to become king of the world that's what he kind of, yeah. he tends to do that if, yeah. yeah yeah he's gonna let everyone fight it out like yeah, yeah. I love the that. idea though that like shanks and a davy back and some type of confrontation will happen at elbath because there's a lot of things that are lining up right you've got big mom's history with elbath that still kind of needs to be addressed you've got kid yeah. going there right now to potentially talk to Saul. You've got all the Norse things going on with Shanks' crew, and we know we had, obviously, the fights with Kaido and the fights with Big Mom. That confrontation between Luffy and Shanks in some capacity still has to happen, and the other thing that I think is so important that people still forget about time and time again is what was brought up all the way back in Zoe with that giant rogue poneglyph, right? The idea that, like, where is the location of the final rogue poneglyph? Because the, you're supposed to find out about the poneglyphs at the final island on the Grand Line. 
Lodestar. And that you're, yeah. you're supposed to do the other islands in order. So I think if Shanks is going for the One Piece right now, if that's actually his goal, just like everybody else, he still has to get the Rogue Polyglyphs. There has to be some, and we don't know what his relationship to the other Yonko was, or like if he had the information from Kaido. We know that Shanks stopped Kaido from going to Marine for it. He could have very well gotten the rubbing of Kaido's Polyglyph all the way back then. And yeah. so I think like tying all of that together potentially with Elbap, if that is the location of the final road Poneglyph, could answer like a lot of those questions and doing it in a timely manner so Oda can actually still get through what he needs to get through in the story by the time that he wants to finish it. Yeah. I can see what's interesting with the, you were talking about the Elbaf note and like Big Mom, something that th thanks to Hidden, we had a conversation recently about that. And it was just like, Big Mom wanted to marry off her daughter for like good relations, but like also she wants to have giant kids or something like that. But how has she gotten all the other race kids? She's literally stolen people and procreated with them with how we don't know, but like she yeah. has. And, and, and so she made it happen. But she made but it work. With, yeah. But with um, the Elbaf, it seemed like she wanted to be on good relations with them. And what's interesting, like you said, we still don't know what her Ponegov said, the, despite them, the Straw Hats having it for, I don't know how many years at this point, it's still stuck in Brooke's head, though, the rubbings of them. And we don't know what's there, but there's a road Ponegov and a regular one. And I almost wonder if that regular one was like, had like, you know, ancient weapon knowledge and it gave us an island. And that might be why she wanted to be in good relations with Elbaf because that, that, um, the ancient weapon that she, she, wanted to be on good relationship was with on Elbaf. And that's where like Hidden Hidden Island uh, hit me with like a really really cool idea about why it would make sense that the, the last ancient weapon would be on Elbaf. Yeah, let's, not, let's not pretend that Big Mom is an altruistic character though. No, she doesn't want good exactly. relations because she's a good person. She wants good relations because she yeah. wants power. She wants yeah. a relationship with the giant yeah. because she wants power. She, she has, has a, kids of all of these I mean, different tribes because she wants power. She has this very warped sense of like, yes. yeah, it's all the yeah. world coming together, but it's under her. her. It's, but yeah. it's under, under her own her delusions, her. basically. Even it's though there's no intent, it's a delusion. It's a, it's she herself delusion. does not view her as evil. She thinks this yes, is the way the correct. world should be. Everyone yeah. equal, as in with, like, I'm on top, of course. Yeah, that's also like the mindset yeah. of, like, most dictators as well, too. Like, yeah, most dictators don't actually come out and be like, I'm evil. Yeah, that's not usually how it works. Do you think that your back is so strong that do you think Elbaf is so strong that, like Kaido did to Wano, Wano was regarded as very strong, but he still took over Wano. Do you think Elbaf is so strong that Big Mom couldn't take it over if she wanted oh, I to? Think, well, that's I think a big part of the reason why they picked up for that yeah. reason. They said they have the strongest military in the entire world. So yeah. Them, like, I have expectations for them off that stable alone. You don't want to be saying something like that and then just game body by here for Luffy. Like, I'm expecting that like, there's one giant there. Like, maybe we get a Thor, an Odin, someone there that yeah. can actually okay. go and just yeah. body somebody. Giant, I agree with you. Wait, 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 I make it sound like it's an entire army. Like, the, the, the big, the big yeah. issue is a lot like, of I agree with you that I want the giants to be strong, but remember how Akainu and everyone regarded Wano and their samurais, but when they saw their samurais, they had a bad source. I'm with that. They had a bad source. But yeah. Some of them were just, you know, whatever. But I'm, I'm hoping the giants they, are not they, bad. They Otherwise, Oda, we don't have to do it. I think the Marines want to do anybody else to do, you know, when they fucking little toothpicks and Kaido, they strong. Also, if you can't get out of here, yeah, don't just expect to both together. He's just going to go over there. My man cut a world breath. That might have been it, but he did it. I think the third ancient weapon. Big Mom and the pirates, could Big Mom and her pirates beat the giants? We don't know. Yeah. easier to make an alliance with them so yes. you don't have to. It's the same thing they with might, They might play Maybe baseball with them. Maybe pirates could body the German kids if they wanted to, but you know what's easier? Yeah. Marry off one of my kids yeah. and gain their power without yeah. having to go to war with them. This, right. You can relate that to real life warfare exactly. as well. You know, you don't yeah. want to fight with your enemies to weaken yourself so that you mm. get defeated afterwards. Exactly. Another yeah. stuff that I really like about this, as far as the giants, I think they live on top of the tree. And so, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like you, you have to destroy the tree to get a thing, which is this impossible feat. And then you have something like uh, Emu's weapon, right? And I like, I like the visual, and I like the thought. This also relates to Ragnarok of, of the tree eventually getting destroyed, destroyed, and, and falling yeah. down across the world, which would be fucking awesome yeah um, I, was, I was gonna say too jb because like the whole thing with like the giants living on the top i would think like if anyone's gonna be there, like the high royalties like the low keys done like they are the ones that are actually like, the rulers so they the have the opportunity to be yeah, there yeah. the ones that are underneath the ones that i would guess because like, of the poverty giants or whatever they're the ones that stay at the bottom and yeah. eventually when we go up there that's when we have like a whole tussle of like whatever the conflict may be because it depends like how long we think El is gonna be i think it's probably gonna be on the length of whole cake island i don't see it being the length of wano no. unless we were to get some ties to him and the whole norse mythology stuff connected to El so only i could see being like that because then it would actually like, open up more things towards the actual end of the final saga as we go into the war itself. I've always imagined Yggdrasil being like a series of sky islands because there's different realms with the tree. That's the whole point. So, so it's just like different cities or maybe maybe towns of like the hierarchy of giants all yeah, the way up yeah, to the yeah. top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First I think floor, actually, floor, um, third floor. Yeah, I think actually on the top of uh, on the top of Yggdrasil in mythology, there's like a giant hawk or something. Yes. So I don't know, it's something like yeah. that. Could I was yeah, actually yeah. going to get into. So I actually yeah. have some Norse lore I can bring into that. Oh yay! I love this. this. Okay, so there's <laughs> some interesting stuff. Okay, so. With, um, you remember in, in Little Garden when Dorian Bragi said that their attack could basically put a hole in anything with the in exception the, of, except yeah. the giant the blood giant serpent, serpent yes. covered in blood. Yes, yes. So I think Jormungandr. Yes. Well, this got me okay. thinking. Maybe the maybe the giants and the people of Elbath, because they're so old, old and because they're such an isolated culture, maybe they have a different name for all these various things that we've become familiar with. Red, red line, line. Yeah. red yep. circle. Yep. So now, now in Ygg
um, there are three like big primary like god beasts that inhabit this tree. There is a serpent that's under the ground, under the tree, which could be like um, Poseidon and the sea kings in the ocean underneath. Or There's something like that's ground up. Or, 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 or <laughs> Nolan Kachi. Um, then you have in the forest, at ground level, you have the stags that feed on whatever I think falls from the tree. I, I might be wrong yeah. on that. And then at the top of the tree, you have a hawk that's perched on top. And these are like the, the three layers of the world tree, I'm pretty sure. And um, I was thinking, what if that's the ancient weapons? Like, what if Poseidon, what if their, their name for uh, Poseidon is Jormungandr, or not Jormungandr, um, uh, Nidogr, the, the uh, snake that's like underground. And then I don't know what the hawk, name of the stags are. Hawk thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, the bird is, on there. is the name of the hawk. Yeah. Oh, is that what the name of it is? Yeah. Beautiful so, like, one, yeah. How relevant all this discussion is. One Piece is, is, is awesome. Yeah. yeah. This is why I love talking These about it. Things you can talk about everything else like. through One Piece. I've had discussions about Pythagoras now because Pythagoras is a character. Yeah. I love this. I, I love talking about the hypotenuse. Uh, I had a yeah. conversation with somebody recently about like Spike. It's because of the whole microwave thing that Bonnie and Luffy were like looking for like the food and stuff. Like, oh, yeah, imagine this, and it'll just happen. I'm like, oh wow, Spike Kids. That's awesome. Spike Kids. There you go. We know this man. We'll put a we put a reference to anything in. Okay, guy. Look, I saw that Game of Thrones reference with my boy Jon Snow slash Luffy. Yeah. Any reference. Yeah. Well, about to the, uh, I think we saw a lot of Sanskrit village about like, the, at the top of the tree specifically because what we saw about, yeah, we saw these like colossal trees, this would be a dress, and, like it overshadowed the complete island. And the island yeah. is mostly mountains beneath it, but then yep. we see the village where Big Mom was at, clear skies, no tree. It's like a completely open sky, so it would make sense if it's on top of the tree where they have access to a clear sky. Good point. That yeah, really that's a great. There was never any explanation of like you know them leaving the island or coming down off the tree. It just cuts to like Mother Caramel leaving. Yeah. yeah. Now Arthur, Arthur, think of this: if they have that bird at the top of the tree, and Uranus is like the one mysterious ancient weapon that's like we don't yeah. know where it is, and that's uh, the sky god. Maybe Elbaf has Uranus, and that's why Big Mom wants that to marry so Loki. Like, oh, that's why no one can make a move on them, and maybe Loki is to Uranus what like Shirohoshi is to Poseidon. That's why Big Mom wants to make that marriage. Yeah. Now, question: since we're on the topic of ancient weapons, what the hell was the thing? What was the laser sky cannon that uh, Eam used then? Was it like artificial? This is gonna hurt. Tech from the ancient, ancient like, kingdom, void yeah. century yeah. time that yeah. was a remnant. Vegapunk, you know, like the lightsaber could have been his version, his mini version of that. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I feel like it could it's be Uranus, but it was, I, I feel like it could be Uranus, and that up until just recently they didn't have the missing piece, and that's because I believe every ancient, ancient weapon is something and then a person. So, it's, yeah. Yeah. so it's you know you have Shirohoshi and you have the Sea Kings. You'll have XYZ and then Pluton, the Land Kings, and then you'll have, you know, whoever it is, and then Uranus, the Sky King, and that's that's what you saw. There is something, yeah. again, I don't want to say this because it's because I do think it is maybe it's not just spoiler, but there is something in one piece, obviously, that wrongly kind of hints that, like, that again? Uranus, but that's going to hold against the whole thing. But I kind of wonder, like, Rob Luffy said that if killing Vegapunk was connected to the uh, incident, but I've seen some people say that maybe it's just, oh, they discovered that Vegapunk is connected to the revolution around the sap or something like that. But what if Vegapunk is sort of connected to the black and white? Is it connected to the black and white? Is it connected to the technology advance or something, or is it something more closely connected, okay, connected to Emu directly, you know? Like, did Emu just give the order and then the weapon was sent there, or does Emu have the power, you know? Yeah, because we didn't see him how he manipulates that. Yeah, yeah. It's like a little Atari 2600 controller. He just like... <laughs> but right I, I now, feel like this is something that they... they yeah, like crane machine. This has to be yeah. something very time-specific, though, because... You can't use it all the time. Well, yeah. well, well, not only that, I feel like if they had this years ago, they would have used it at O'Hara. Oh, my God. You know, yeah, if they, uh, if they have access, what's um, that? I was just going to say, one of one of the things we found out at Water Seven wasn't that Pluton was necessarily the only Pluton, but those blueprints were specifically designed so that if anything was ever created that was similar, there was a way to counteract it. So the whole point of those blueprints was a failsafe. They were not the Pluton, the Pluton blueprints, yes. just as is, there is no ship. So yeah. like, is the possibility that Vegapunk made something along the lines of Pluton or another Pluton recently, and it is recent, because I do agree that it doesn't make sense to me either, that you would send people to do something that you could do with a machine more effectively, like it, like logically on that kind of mass destruction level. Like if you're gonna burn down the whole place anyway, it, it might be a thing that they don't like to use super often, so it's like, well, we ha we have a buster call that's usually good enough, but in some cases, yeah. like when he wants something silenced quick and for good, then he sends the, that. Thing. Yeah. The way I, the way it's I also a message of like if I was just gonna say it's also a matter of if they're continuing to zap islands just into oblivion.
and people don't know where it's like i think the whole point is that people don't realize that it's that it is imu and whereas having this show of a buster call saying that we the navy are this strong mm. serves a point as deterrence yeah. whereas yeah. you know it's just zapping yeah. 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 or hard there's something they knew was wrong in their eyes stuff whereas lucy is like just a freak thing like oh my god it's like well then there you go that's how you get rid of them whereas crazy laser storms like, in this world what are you gonna do these crazy things this is gonna happen to you with these buster calls like that's how they'll make it knowledge not the stuff that is happening with lucia I'll be real though, I feel like Buster Calls have gotten power creeps pretty hard over the course of the story. Like, oh, yeah. like thinking about it compared to like... Bellock like, does not take damage during a round, she interrupts an cast a zero like, pip for like, the beginning really of the next round, which kills damage. It's a show the Navy's muscle, yeah, that's yeah, all yeah, yeah. it is. They need all the help they can get. You gotta use military money however you can. Yeah, you gotta really show the world we're on top, kind of thing. The yeah. Buster Calls and Dark Lord doesn't destroy right now, it's just to get jumped in the movies and the non-canon fan thing. It's literally just to show that's how the guys are at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I love how in Stampede, because it was stated in Eddie's lobby, once a Buster Call summoned, you cannot cancel it. No one can. And then in Stampede, yeah. at the end of the movie, they're like, please cancel the Buster Call. Okay. And then that's the end of the movie. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the power of non cannon. Yeah. Yep. Oh, non cannon so, will kick your ass, man. All right. Exactly. Yeah, it's a great minus one coming to the story, then it's over. Yep. Oof. So Matt, what are uh, and, and, and the volcanic kind of cave system in that movie? Watch out for that. That might destroy the plot. So I, uh, Matt, I didn't hear your thoughts. What are what's your hope for the final saga? Hey Matt, which Matt? Which, which Matt? There's three of them. Right, there yeah. are three of them. <laughs> Matt, Matt <Yeah>. Owens. <laughs> Me. Um, I a couple of the things that some people have discussed. I'm like Roger said it. I'm all in on Shin's baby back fight. That's what I want. The OG baby back fight is great. I don't care what people have to say about it. I love the baby back fight. I want them. I'm with you, with you. A, to do a Shanks confrontation. Um, I am. Are they fighting with Bartolomeo? What's going on? I think it could be over. I think it could be over the final road possibly. I also like the idea that Elbat might be something that's protected under Shanks, and that we're gonna get like a Shanks being kid, like actually get it on screen sometime soon, which would be uh, nice. Randy, just let you know, there's a stream lag pretty bad right now. That was low-key, like, one of my biggest goals, because, like, you know, everyone has, like, oh, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. I needed those three, 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 three. <laughs> That's what I needed. <laughs> Very thankful, for sure. So I, I got a random aside. What do you guys think? So the, the power source has come up a lot recently, like an eternal power source that creating the sun or whatever. What do you guys think about that being the core of the planet through the whole Nini's lobby? Oh, that's a good way of looking at it. That's so cool. we, so we should playing. be back now. We should be back now. Never consider okay. Middle yeah, Earth. Better now. Yeah, yeah. So, Matt, if you wanted to finish your point. Uh, no, I just really have a Davy back fight agenda. That was it. I just wanted to push my Davy back fight agenda. For my, the well, see, well, my new Matt, my Davy back fight. I want, I, I want, I want to ask, I want to ask him more. Like, like, how do you see this playing out? Because that's always the biggest problem for me personally. Is within the scope of, of all these incredible powers and, and all the high stakes and, and stuff. How do you see like the Davy back fight playing out and what time? Do you I think it's you know there have been a lot of people have difficulty feeling like Luffy and Shanks fighting. Why would it happen? And, you know, I, I don't want to get in power scaling, but like even with your five now, how would Luffy ever beat Shanks? Because a lot of people in the community think that Shanks is untouchable, all powerful, godlike character. And so, how do you have a confrontation? How do you have an exchange of information or something like that in a way that doesn't have to be a fight? And that just makes sense. You know that Oda loves to reuse certain ideas and elements and stuff that have been set up. So the Davy Back fight doesn't seem like just a one-off. We also know that it's something that's very historical. We know that it's something that's been very important in pirate culture before. So it just seems like such a natural way for a Luffy versus Shanks confrontation to occur. And so again, I think it, I think it would be over something like information. It being over a road monograph. It being over something like that makes sense that shanks has something obviously you know shanks knows a lot more than Luffy does so for this to be over the exchange of some sort of important information it just kind of makes makes sense to me let me hit you with something i, I have a theory in, in the background on baby backfight and exact answers exactly what you're saying why would shanks and luffy ever fight and the thing is it's been set up from the very beginning what did shanks say in chapter one he said or, or like luffy and shanks have this agreement that Shanks is, or Luffy is going to bring Shanks a straw hat and return the straw hat. But at this point in the story, it makes no sense for Luffy to return the straw hat. So it might be that that's, the Davy backfight might be over that straw hat. That to test Luffy's ac like acumen as a pirate, Shanks throws him into a Davy backfight and says, Hey, if you if you beat me, you get to keep the straw hat. If you lose, I get the straw hat. And at the same time, the thing is, the if we take you know the rules of the Davy backfight in, into account here, then the other the losing crew has to lose their pirate flag at the same time so the stakes are super high it's not a little thing luffy wants to be a pirate so does shanks and if it's over the straw hat which luffy wants right he's the straw hat pirates everyone calls him movie wire luffy if we go into the last second doesn't have the straw hat after yeah me, it wouldn't make sense yeah this is the thing though like 
Shanks obviously pirates. knows that Luffy's Nika and it's all set up, right? It's like an obvious thing. He knows, yeah, but, but, yeah. but then when you think about what Shanks would it just be a test? Would right, it, 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 it would be, I don't know if it would be a gatekeep to Nika, but it would more or less be like, uh, like more Kaido's Shanks thing. passed on yeah. his, you know, will in that first chapter, right? And so it's in let. To, to realize Luffy is the right person to meet the final goal, yeah, Shanks is going to test him. I think I think the idea of the baby back fight maybe is like a little bit. It, it's possible. I just think like Oda's setting up the literally a test in Bartolomeo, like what Luffy do, pick his friend him kind of situation, right? Because why think, else? Do you think we're really gonna get two stories with that same setup? Are we really gonna get a? I gotta go save my friend Kobe, and I gotta go save my friend. I don't think Lomeo. I don't think Luffy's involved in Kobe. I don't know. That's I don't think there's going to be any other chance. I'm not worried about Bart. I'm not worried about that, Bart. That's, that's clearly a Garth Kuzan yeah, that's a Garth situation. situation going on. Where Kuzan's so, obviously going to be like, I'm a needy man. And then they switch on Blackbeard. Agreed. So, Agreed. I, I want to take a moment hat. to introduce, we, uh, you know, we had some new people join in here. So we have, uh, we have, we have uh, Silvers, we've got Evil. And yes, we have sir. The, and we have the Red Force podcast here. Uh, yeah, my my baby back agenda is, while I love the idea of a, of a Shanks fight, and I expect the moment that Luffy and Shanks to meet uh, for Luffy to immediately punch Shanks, uh, because that's the way that I believe he views uh, being a strong pirate. It's just he's going to start a fun battle. I, it's all out of love. But the but the um, um, but the sorry, <laughs> but the, the the main point that I wanted to make is and I, uh, we'll go right back to you, Townsie. Is right now my agenda for a Davy back is actually against the Cross Guild. I want I want. Buggy that to fire. to have okay. a Davy back because then we just get a bunch of like circus people doing what they do best yeah. and it's like the only way Buggy could actually like even stand a chance against everybody and then this is a way for Oda to naturally if he so chooses have the Zoro versus Mihawk fight be the yeah. combat of the Davy back fight. It would be the ultimate fantasy booking, honestly. Uh, you can have the, a good moments too. Or it depends on what island it happens too. You can know about a moment where like Mihawk is gonna work with Shanks in the Davy Back fight. And it's like you can see that pairing or see them fight it out and stuff like on screen. Like that's like oh, but that should be dope. Randy, I, I spent like a solid 30 minutes this morning thinking to myself, like, hey, if the cross scale comes up, like what am I gonna say about I don't really have many predictions for that, but that's like my new headcanon. Like that's that's yeah. brilliant. I love that. I love that. Just like yeah, the circus good. fair, like fairground yeah. aesthetic. It's like just like Buggy's just freaking out the whole time while everyone yeah. else, including readers, have Mihawk walks out eating cotton candy. Well, like, yeah, but here, okay. here's another thing on top of it. Right? Oh, God, not ready is, for this. Imagine this, not right? Ready for the tag team this time. Imagine this, right? Oh, Afro Luffy coming back. Oh, oh God, the, yeah. Uh, the original notes from Oda, right, about Zoro, was that he was originally supposed to be a member of Buggy's crew. Mm -hmm. So, what if they lose the first round of the Davy back? And Buggy chooses Zoro, <laughs> so Zoro never gets to get to gets to participate. And then Buggy swaps himself out at the last minute from the combat because he doesn't want to fight anybody. And then it's Mihawk it after happens, they've yeah. gotten Zoro back. And then it's like there's an exchange between Luffy and Zoro, like, no, 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 this I, this is where I do this. You know what? That actually makes sense. You, that. you guys yeah. ever notice how um, like Zoro will sit out or he'll, he'll be yeah, he for, like, an an I really like yeah, that, Randy, because like, maybe like that will be a set, like it'll be a play on that. Cause you know he would be getting switched over to the crew with the, I guess Buggy's crew with the uh, yeah. Davy back fight. So in a way that would be like him sitting out where he would be like a huge help. And, and the play like, on what he said to Chopper during Davy yes, back. Yeah, Zoro <laughs> treats this very seriously. If they yeah. did a Davy back, a great he moment this too, and Zoro lost and he had to go over. He would do that. That's how he does things. Yeah. Do you think Zoro's crocodile sitting right there? He would be like, no, we're taking legal profits. We have to remember, crocodile was there. He's not in charge. That's when Buggy like, complains. Yeah, uh, hey, I'm, I'm the emperor here, so you know, Buggy yeah. don't complain. I'm the emperor. Everybody, all the other pirates are gonna be like, Nah, that's not fair, cause yo, uh, your captain said this. Y'all taking ill. Right, yeah, but it's also right. Oda, right? So it could be a situation where Brock and Buggy are having a conversation. It's like, No, this is how we get Nico Robbins so that we can go to Laptail. And then at the last minute, yeah. someone just says Zoro, and it's like, Well, a name was chosen. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 it's just has the energy just because they can't get on the same team. Buggy, Buggy, Panther, Robin, and Zoro. Like... Nice. Yeah. Let me ask you. I got carried. Oh, yeah, he's going to break out. We need to build down to a point on Someone's got to see. Probably through cross skill. I mean, it seemed like he hated him, right? They just seemed like he hated Dopamingo. Yeah, after Rainford, Dopamingo offered him to work with him, and Crocodile was like, no. So, yeah, I think he just wants to be Hawk instead of that whole thing, yeah. In certain situations, I imagine Crocodile would pretty much do whatever it takes. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite artists, one of his opinions, Oz Victor Dog, 
Oh, that's Maj. That's a good one. Big Maj. Yeah. yeah. My son. It's my son. Hey, the Dolo. <laughs> he, uh, he did a fan chapter. He did a fan chapter not too long ago where they actually say they're from here. Yeah, I made that. The way that he pulls it actually makes a whole lot of sense, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The only thing is, I just don't see Doflamingo answering to anybody. He he, he would like, want to be the leader. He yeah. Wants to be the leader. That's why, that's he's not someone's gonna and Especially with Crocodile, I feel like Crocodile yes. does not want to play second fiddle. Like he's only yeah. doing this because of buggy game the like title of the Emperor. Like that's why he reached out to Doflamingo. Like, was with title. I can certainly see him playing certain second fiddle. Just stand on the sideline. Would, like, would, would you? Would you know? second fiddle. Yeah, kind of. He was part of that. He was. he was afraid. I mean, he was afraid. Okay. So you say that, but Crocodile wasn't afraid of Whitey. At all. Okay, that was yeah, because, yeah, because, <laughs> I mean, listen. listen. Some people deal with fear. Okay, but I'm saying, if you want to have that real disposition of a king, you know what I'm saying? Crocodile's cool, cool. <laughs> but he's also a bum. No, 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 no. He's not a bum, though. You know that. Look how he dresses together. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's in Valencia. And isn't is it Doflamingo's goal to destroy the Celestial Dragons? And at the end of the day, Last Saga is about destroying the Celestial Dragons. So one way or the other, Doflamingo's going to come back. I feel like doflamingo has got an ego on him where he thinks he can probably manipulate both of them at the same time. So he'd just play along at his own game at the same time. Yeah, he's definitely going by the end of the series. He's going to mess himself over at some point. <laughs> like the way yeah, I see it, the he reason why the reason why he was under Kaido is because Kaido's end goal was to take over the world, destroy the world government, right? So if someone else is doing that, I don't see why Doflamingo wouldn't just like be a part of that. Like, similar to how when they broke out of Impel Down, like Crocodile sided with Luffy because they had he had kind of had to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like Doflamingo might be in that position where it's like it's either I side with that that team or the other team. I'm not siding with. Also, Sussex. I really yeah, think like Doflamingo just wants to get out of Impel Down and see the crazy stuff happening in the world right now. He'll do whatever he has to in order to get that. You know. I don't think he. I don't think Duffel is the type of person right now that don't necessarily have any alliances or anything like that. Where, like, yeah, he doesn't or anybody. His whole crew is also just chilling, watching. He's just chilling. Too, watching. So, he just chilling. Yeah. Yeah. And also, Duffel like you know, he is an impel down, but when you what think of it, he's like spell. the most connected character. He already predicted everything that was about to happen. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Not to yeah. still give him newspapers. Which yeah, they still give him newspapers. He's also not on Kaido's leash anymore. If he does get out, he's pretty much free from all the issues that were plaguing him before. Like. You know, he was pretty much fearing for his life I, in the sad factory that they I've had. always loved a way yeah. that they could break out. Probably not going to happen, but it's already been revealed since Senor Pink is confirmed to be an impel down. All the other, you know, commanders and Doflamingo yeah, were there. Sure. If Pika gets the uh, C Prism cuffs off, it's game over. He can take yeah, control of the whole damn prison right there. Oh, Done. Yeah. Imagine the whole yeah. 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 Okay. That would be um, crazy. I'm not sure how many of you guys actually read the, uh, the original plan for film Red. What if they're not actually in? The impel down that we're that we're actually that we're all thinking of. That we're all oh, there's like another one. Yeah, the new impel down that supposedly supposed, that was supposed to be like a sky for if anybody's played World Seeker. Okay. Okay. No, well, okay. If you're no, because the crew, though, it makes sense. But Doflamingo, I'm pretty sure we know is Doflamingo specifically down, so mentioned cool. Magellan oh, yeah, he, he when he was. Oh, yeah, he specifically mentioned Magellan. Yeah, I'm just throwing out the idea. That's a cool idea. I'm not against the sky prison. That's those two words sound cool in any fiction. I'm just saying. I agree. A little mini Azkaban. Sky prison. Actually, by the way, we're talking about like Doflamingo doesn't know from the but come on, Bonchan. Oh my God. Oh wow. Listen, if we didn't get that cover yep. story showing that they were alive, I, I think the moment would hit way more in the manga just seeing them come back after the fact or something. You know, just having to show up again, it's like, uh, I, I don't like, I don't like Wonka being alive. I'm not gonna lie. Back, I'm you... breaking my costume out again from the greatest LC. <laughs> 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 if we might get the Impel Down Breakout V2, we got Don Flamingo, we got his whole squad, we got, uh, we got everybody, you know what I'm saying? We got both players. Listen, I'm here for an Impel Down Breakout V2. Yes, sir. That costume turned out great, so I'm down to break it out again. I mean, I'm a really advocate that, like, I was gonna say, that could also tie into the whole Battle Royale that's going on outside. Like, that Impel Down could happen, like, in the midst of that, which has more problems already onto the world that they were dealing with. So, yeah, I'm looking for it. Nobody's really brought up the National Strategy either. Him knowing that? Oh, yeah. Well, it's Emu, 100%. It's not 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 100%. Before yeah. Eam, Eam could like Eam, uh, hit an idea that Eam was like a supercomputer, but like when you think about what Doflamingo was just talking about when he mentioned that in that chapter, he talked about this personality switching thing. So mm -hmm. it could be that yeah, Eam's the vessel, and he just wanted to be inside Eam because Eam's body or something about Eam. Itself oh yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Is, exactly. He is like a godly exactly. being or something, yeah, or yeah. a supercomputer or whatever. I mean, also like you gotta understand, Doflamingo was able to his information on that treasure is enough to scare the shit out of the Tenryu to let him just kind of do whatever he wants, even though he's yeah. celestial dragon and everything. Yeah. So it's, it's got to be something on that level of Eam. I've always know? had a question about that. Like, how did he even get that? Do they just tell those stories to little kids? Like, oh, by the way, Eam's oh, like you know, like, Doflamingo's not a normal little kid. He was a 
he did something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 I mean, he did say like when he was there, like he wanted to go back to collect the fountain on his dad's head or something. Yeah, he had saw something there which he's used as a the thing just to basically get back at them and say, okay, you can't touch me because I got this information. Yeah. But I also think at the same time too, you have to remember about the assassin souls come after him. I could sell assassins being the God's Knights. If you want to introduce oh, yeah, them yeah. into the story, that'd be a good way to have them go after Doflamingo if he were to break out and see what kind of tussle we get from that. And before I think Sabo, I think Sabo and Doflamingo are low-key parallel characters because they were both young blonde kids being called young master. Both of them come from like some kind of um high society. Royalty, high society. Yeah, yeah. And the cool thing about Sabo is I believe like as as a young kid he didn't know about Emu until he was an adult. But Doflamingo would be the inverse, where Doflamingo discovered Emu sitting on the throne just like Sabo did. Like, that actually gets really, really, really up. They have a scar on their eye. And exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. The, the obvious image, you know, just like parallels like there that. with the way that, you know, the Gorosei bowed to, to Emu, the way that, you know, his crew bowed to him as a kid. It's there. We need him there. It's right there. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm totally expecting an Impel Down 2.0 at, at some point. I don't necessarily think that it needs to be the Cross Guild or anything or have Doflamingo involved in that at all. I think what we need from the story is someone important to to us, someone important to the Straw Hats, gets okay. thrown in there, and then maybe that's what the big event that the Grand Fleet is supposed to do. That's what they do. So the thing that, that was foreshadowed to us at the end of Dressrosa, that they were going to be responsible for a huge event. Like, if, say, I don't know, they throw Vivi in there. I mean, like, they, or anybody. Sabo gets thrown in there, something like that. I was thinking it was Law, because, like, Law, because Law, after Blackbeard yep. and Ace's fight, Ace got thrown in, so then after Blackbeard and Law's fight, we, you know, Brago came in and said, like, it didn't seem like Blackbeard was interested in the fruit. The whole thing about Law's fruit is very interesting, but the Warlords are wanted now, so, like, yeah. Law getting thrown yeah. in, it could make sense, and then that would be a cool parallel of, and, like, of the original call back to Dress Rosa, for sure. Yes, yeah. and yeah. it gets and then, the Grand Fleet there. Yeah, and, and at this point, really... Law should be stronger than Dopamine, right? Like, at this point... 100%. Know, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Doflamingo might have been working out in the prison, man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he just ripped through his teeth. He just jacked you know, Doflamingo. Like, no, yeah, it tells you that. That was hard. He looks like Togoro, like coming out of the cell. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's doing Arnold Otis with his chains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just love the fact that Oda's still focusing so much on the original seven warlords, except Moria because yeah. he gives a shit. But like, you know, who gives a shit? Moria's pretty much dead at this point. He might come back to the zombies. The reason, that's right, what's bro, going to get. Bro, he's like, right now. I can say that about a character. Who gives a shit about Moria? Fuck that guy. We get his head We get like one speech bubble for Moria. We feel like he loves it. Yeah. 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 brings him up once every three years. Come on. Come on. Well, you yeah, guys are throwing a bunch of names out there, and a character, though, that stood out to me specifically in terms of somebody I do think we are going to see a lot more from is Vivi, though. Right? Oh, yeah. Because at the end of the day, oh, Vivi yeah. is still... I'm expecting nothing this year. I need an update. Right, and I feel like with what we know now about Kuma, and Kuma, you know, rocketing himself towards the red line, and being present in Reverie when all this stuff went down, when Sabo potentially killed Vivi's father, which obviously was not the case. We know Sabo did not murder Kuma. No, he didn't. I feel Best like in the wherever series. he warped Sabo could have been wherever he warped Vivi, and or if they're separate, it could be a situation in which Vivi potentially ends up on wherever the next island the Straw Hats are going to go to. My right? big theory like, has been. I think that Emu, Emu captured Vivi. Come on now. I really hope. I hope not. Even the actually, weird thing with Vivi. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw he, yeah. if, if I may, if I may, just like I, this is a totally out there weird thing. I've seen other people bring this up, but it's something. The more I hear this idea, the more that I like it. And that is the idea that Vivi, considering she is still a member of the Straw Hat crew and is a character that does not have a devil fruit, could potentially become the future owner of Kuma's devil fruit. Because oh! Way, 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 way. I see what you say. Not yeah, the direction you're going with it, okay. You know where I'm going with this, exactly. Because way, way, way back in the day, and again, I'm bringing it back to Artwork to, to check me, because I know you know the exact translation I'm talking about. There was an SBS in which somebody brought up the idea that all the characters that have Devil Fruits on the Straw Hat crew have numbers tied to their Devil Fruit. And somebody said, well, it's kind of weird. We have the Nikyu Nikyu no Me, which is obviously Kuma's fruit, which is the Paw Paw fruit, has the two numbers left outside of choppers. It's like, what, the Yomi Yomi no Me, the Hana Hana no Me, the Hito Hito no Me, and the Gumu Gumu no Me, right? And the last two, yeah. out of one through ten, are the Nikyu Nikyu fruit. And all like, yeah. yeah. Hey, Nika, Nika fits out as well. The two and the nine. Isn't that the um? I forget what the name of the game is called, but like Godo Godo Yeah, Godo Godo, Godo, Godo Wawase. Yeah. yeah. No, like, Godo yeah. Wawase, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't um a lot a, a while ago before we got the like I don't even think we still have the name of uh, Kingman's fruit unless we do. We do, we, we do, we do. Yeah. Artur, take yeah, it away. The, 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 the point I was going to, though. Well. Yeah, yeah. The point I, I'm going True. to, though, is I think where we know we are in the story right now, right? And Kuma potentially sacrificing himself for the sake of his daughter or for the sake of the revolutionary army, yeah. I think it's highly likely 
more now than ever before that Kuma does not make it out of the story alive, right? Like base yeah, Kuma. Think, and yeah. we've seen time and time yeah. again now with these the, the weird green blood that Vegapunk's making that passes on double fruit powers yeah. and potential smile powers or whatever. I think it's highly likely that someone else in the story gets the paw paw fruit. And if presumably Kuma sends, and it won't be Sabo, because Sabo already has Ace's fruit. If if he sent Vini somewhere that's important to the story, that is going to bring her back with the Straw Hats, and potentially he puts like his faith in, in Vidi later on in the story being the one that sort of ties into the old world, right? The world government, like the, the established kingdoms, that potentially she's the one that could end up getting his true double fruit by the end. So ending. do you think Vidi's in so, Marijua right now and Kuma's going to like encounter her or I, that this already here's happened? My weird, here's, here's my weird tinfoil hat. I think that actually Vivi is an Elbaf and okay. has been an Elbaf since the end of the Reverie. And I that mean, is sure. where he warped to Vivi. Because yeah. if she gets there, and obviously being from Alabasta, knowing about the Poneglyph that was there, somehow finds out something else from Saul or the giants that are there and the tie to Alabasta's history and Elbaf's history, that could loop everything together again. And then not yeah. only reunite Vivi with the crew when they're obviously going to be there, but forces them to not have to go to another island to then link up with her by the end of the story. Because yeah. the last thing I'll say about this, because I don't want to take over the conversation, but I've been sitting back holding it down for when Vivi was going to be brought up. <laughs> oh, and I'm ready to cook too, Roger. I'm ready the to cook. You're making some good dinner, Roger. Day, right, no. Is that a lot of stuff has been released over the course of the 20 years that has been around. A lot of merchandise has been made with Pirate Queen Vivi. Yeah. And I'm not getting the shipping wars. I'm not getting any of this stuff, right? But... <laughs> The idea that Vivi would be seen by the as the pirate queen by the end of the story, say for example, she's a member of the Straw Hat crew, isn't necessarily married to Luffy or whatever, but just as Luffy is the pirate king, wants to be the pirate king, the representation of the man on top of the freest of all the people in the world, right? And potentially his dream is to have everybody be a pirate because he sees pirates as being most free. What would be the tie to Vivi being the pirate queen it would be that vivi as the one who is the representation of that old government of that old world of the one who is actually true loyalty her role on the crew would be that of like the mother the one that ties yeah. into all of the other stuff that we've seen over the course of all these other years within the story of like the actual kingdoms that were tied before the world government did what they had to do so that's last thing i was going to say is i think vivi is going to be a lot more important to the story within the, the next fact, two years than a lot of people are expecting so i gotta, I gotta jump in here sorry family too that i gotta jump in not, they, they left they didn't yeah stay in the region exactly. yeah so i too so have been I'm waiting surprised. for the the, the vv topic to come up right because anybody that's a part of my community knows that vv my favorite character in the entire story so uh, now 5 5. As, exactly 5.5 so <laughs> she's the crew. I'm she's not the crew. afraid. She's coming back. It's my number one agenda. People think it's Laws and Sword or Darks and Sword. No, it's Vivi comes back. Uh, so, you know, the, the long running theory on the channel is that she was going to be stowing away with uh, Sai and Leo after the Reverie. But uh, for the past couple of months, I too, Roger, have been saying that Vivi is an LBAF, have a video on it. And the point of this is that Vivi, I feel, needs to be a part of the LBAF, like Arc, Saga, whatever, because she was so relevant during Little Garden as well. Somebody so hit if, me. If it's a situation ding, 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 ding. where oh. uh, Dory and Brocky are already on the island or anything, and they are made aware of what's going on in the world, then they could be hiding her. So it could be a situation where, you know, and you know, we didn't actually get into this topic yet, um, and, you know, we'll, we'll definitely jump into this. All right, I'm in for you know, some the, punishment. The mystery man on uh, Egghead, which I'm not necessarily going to, you know, get into right now, but some people did suggest in my chat, what if it was Saul, and then there's an opportunity for Saul not to be on Elbaf right now, and that he's on Egghead. So then the mystery person that would be on Elbaf could be Vivi, that is essentially hiding away. And she could be the person that like brokers the relationship that may get damaged by Kid between the Straw Hats and the Giants as, you know, this you know, the politician of the crew. It should right. be it should be a situation where Vivi goes with them to Laptail as well and learns about the true history because her yeah. family had a role in it. So if she is the one that also disseminates that information to the you know the greater world as well if we figure out the the internet of this the Vegapunk internet if she is the one just like at the end of Alabasta you know giving her speech and everything she is the one to tell the world about all of the wrongs of the world she could be someone that is you know trusted by the world yes. and then and then the one that by the end of the series is the one that is reforming and reframing the government as you know potentially even like the 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 chief politician or you know just the the, the queen of the world um, the, the show of the spinning. world yeah, so, you are uh, spinning because that goes right sorry to cut you off but just the one thing i was going to say that i forgot to bring up exactly is that at the end of the story 
even if everything, the world gets turned upside down and there's Oof. all these other things, there needs to be some type of semblance of order still, right? Yeah. You've got the idea that like maybe Kobe becomes the new head of the Marines or whatever, or Smoker or whatever, you can have that debate, but you've got the new Marines that will have to form. You've got the pirates, but you've also got the world government. You've got the islands. And like you said, you need somebody in charge of the actual established big hit, big hit. that are there. That's why. Right. That have such a history of the world. And so BD absolutely is, could, could be that person. And the tie to Dorian Broggy was the other thing I wanted to bring up, but you already got to it, about the fact that BD, we haven't seen her with a lot of other characters. She doesn't have a lot of other friends within the world, but she yeah. does have Dorian Broggy, and they're in Elbaf right now. So See, there but, you go. Yeah. By the same yeah. coin, though, like, Vivi could be really important and prominent for the story. I think most people agree with that, but that doesn't have to include her, like, escaping of Marijua and making it to Elbaf, because we know for a fact that Emu had Vivi's poster, it took it up to the right. throne, and now Cobra's sure. dead and Vivi's missing. So, like, when you try to, like, really study Emu, there's, like, three prominent mythologies that would, like, portray Emu. I think you guys have heard of Imhotep. Maybe you guys have heard of Ravana yes. or Endika. All three of those guys Always that, a like, crit. roll really well in terms of their mythology. <clears throat> All of them captured a woman to make her his bride. And I think that's way too ironic. Um, and I think, like, Alpha Too Late, if you guys know about him, he made a theory, like, so many years ago about Emu capturing Vivi to make her his bride. And, like, now Vivi's missing, and it's like... That's a that very common on. trope in a lot of mythologies, like even Hades and, you know, Persephone and everything like that. That happens a lot. Uh, so, if possible, I, I, uh, I want to bring up what Randy said before. We're just a little bit, but uh, moving on Egghead, specifically when it comes to... It's still the, healing? Uh, wow. And, like, I have, like, a crack three in regards Four to turns. Because, you know, like, some people are saying soul, or, you know, it could be Vivi. But, for example, in Japanese, the character is speaking in a very polite form, which is, like, very different from something so sad. And I have an idea. It's like, what if it's actually Stussy? And she's actually been a triple agent for later on this time. I, would be I like that. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be crazy. The white tear may seal. Yeah, yeah no, I, I completely got. I feel the chapter of CP0 landed on Egghead, and they were talk, like, Snussy displayed a few interesting things. I was yeah. saying that. I, I don't know if triple agent was right because my chat checked me to be double agent, but it would be double. One, one way or another, okay. it would make sense that, like, if Stussy had some kind of connection in the past, then like when she, she didn't tell Luchi and Kaku about any of the stuff, but then they also said that she knows everything about them. So it's like it was very interesting why she withheld that information. Yeah. And I was thinking a member of Mads from that cover page. Yeah, right. yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I was just about to mention that chapter, the facial reactions. I assumed it was her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, but I'm like, yeah, yeah maybe uh, you know something. A lot of people that I spoke to actually did bring up the fact that that could also be Sora Judge. Yeah, yeah. Well, I also heard Sora. Well, here, yeah. here's, my, here's my thing with Stussy, right? If Stussy was supposed to be a member of Mads, then what the hell is she doing as the ringleader of the underworld and, and the, the pleasure? She has her hands in many she devious broke, stoops. She brokered a deal. Vegapunk, he's he's a man just like the rest of us. I, he needs to have certain things to uh, do, okay. and she can deliver those certain things. Yeah, 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 how do we end up here? No, 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 we're here now. Vegapunk X Stussy, let's talk about this. That's what? why we're no, here. I'm not okay. saying that. I'm saying that Stussy, she's the queen uh, of the Pleasure District. Maybe because she is. You know, need some companions every once in a while. You guys bring up the possibility of... My point with this was simply that, like, look, you can look at Judgment Folk. I mean, like, science is what the entire Mental family is about. They're at the very cutting edge, elite. I look at Queen. It's more individualistic, but you can see the same thing. Yeah, they're definitely elite. Like the, the tier judge, uh, Yeah, they just have their uh, different specialties, know, like bro. Queen with the virus. Know, the the these are as well yeah. heavily associated with science. So Stussy right now, for the world government, I mean she, they would obviously know who she is. So yeah. it's seems like a massive waste of talent, being that this is just Well, she could have been a plan from the start to check on him, you know. She didn't have Yeah, oh yeah, that could have been like thirty years ago. We don't know her age. At some point, she just could have been planned the whole time. No, my my thing is is I don't actually think that it's I don't actually think that it's uh, Stussy that's there in the Mads. I, I think that that's like the obvious I don't thing, think I so have I, to win. I, I, I think kinda, I just have to kill I kind of think eventually. it could be uh, whoever Bonnie's mother is. And, oh, that's a maybe. Okay. So, so, so then, then you have the then you have the, the Kuma I'm going to my treasure card you know, like if, if it was Stussy, I feel like Oda would have just shown her face. About to die. Like, why have her on the other yeah, side? Even like a silhouette. That's that's something that like, yeah, there's people that are very obvious. up. He just did it with Von Ogre and Alki. Don't you think, too, yeah. don't you think a lot of the cool. time, though, like, in, uh, don't you think a lot of the time, though, a lot of mysteries in One Piece aren't that deep and it ends up being something obvious? Anyways? Sometimes, like, yeah. How do you have like, 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 it? Like, like, it's like, like, like Kurama yeah, Saki. Like, 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 it's almost okay, seven. But at the same time, Oda does that on purpose. To, like, it, I, every break week, we're always like, who is this shadow? And he does that. Like, every single chapter have, like, big, giant revelations. Sometimes it's just like, it's a spade, it's a spade. Look at these shoes. Is it Gin? No, it's his who. Yeah. I'm thinking it's Stussy. Yeah, yeah, I got. Yeah, I'm surprised. Most of uh, Zaki's in the chapter. I remember there was a conversation I heard with him, Recon, and them. They did the previous screen talk about who that person could be, and I like the idea that it could be even Lafitte. 
because we do know that the Blackberry Pirates are currently doing their own business right now, the whole simple blah, what happened earlier with putting, but we did not see Lafitte. And if Lafitte is the one that's maybe going there for, I guess, trying to take like no technology, something that's there that's going to help out with Blackbeard, whatever scheme he's pulling off, it'll be interesting to see if that character is the one that's been tempering around with whatever the, uh, you know, the circuits or whatever was going on. It may not be the person that's going to go and help him out, obviously not, but could also have some kind of role there. It's one that I, that is. I was actually when thinking was the last the time we saw Lafitte? Was it on the ship? Last time we saw Lafitte, was in the conversation with Burgess when Burgess was like, oh, get Tia to come through. It's like, no, it's Commodore. Then you go call him. Yeah. So the, the, the thing that Lafitte should really be doing is, you know, to, to go with like cultures of opening your third eye, you can open your third eye with hypnotism. So whatever is related to pudding, you know, if Blackbeard wants to use her to, you know, read Poneglyphs or anything like that, awakening that third eye could be Lafitte's job. And that's why Blackbeard is targeted because he has a hypnotist yeah, yeah. on his hey, you could. Another you could go thing wilder too. with that though, because like let's say like Blackbeard and the pirate and his pirates defeat Garp, and then like while Garp's like all wounded and unconscious or knocked out or whatever, Lafitte, like he could hypnotize Garp even easier. Is that something that's in the realm of possibility? Yeah. Another thing that like Lafitte's missing, but also Shiryu. And the thing is yeah. both of them are a deadly combo. And oh, what's yeah. interesting is we actually have Lafitte's MO on Egghead. If you guys remember Marine Ford. The way the Blackbeards came in was through Lafitte, yes. hypnotizing him, opening the doors, the gates, breaking through the security. At the same time, on Egghead, we don't know how the, the security dropped. We don't know at all, but that is Lafitte's MO every single time. He's invaded a uh, Marine Ford multiple times. In Sengoku was there, Suru was there, Mihawk, Doflamingo, Okuma. He bypassed all their observation. He entered in the room, offered up Blackbeard as the next warrior. Then fight Marine everybody Ford, he broke through, opened up the gates of justice, and now it's like maybe Lafitte is the one who's dropped the... the, the, the um, the security on Egghead, and then that would also play really well because we've been seeing Blackbeard's tie into every single part of the story after Wano. So why not tie him into Egghead in some way? You know, and Lafitte and Shiri would be perfect. That's there's correct. Really actually, theory with yeah. Lafitte because Lafitte has like we don't know his devil fruit, but he has he can turn into like a dove. But what if people don't know what if it's like a mythical angel fruit, and now he has like mythical powers to like manipulate and like brainwash people or something? That'd be. Well, I made a video, and a lot of people thought that Siren could be a good one. Yeah, that's a good one yeah. too. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, what I've always yeah, believed yeah. that he would have eventually. I love that yeah. idea because yeah. because I think it was back in the Impel Down we saw the wings. And stuff, we saw the wings. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this could be a possibility. That, tie, that ties really well into the idea of Blackbeard like kidnapping one of the Seraphim, right? Like a snake. Well, yeah. a snake yeah. is there on Egghead right now. If Lafitte yeah. were to show up and then do something like that, that ties in really well with that. Gecko, I, that's that's great. Yeah. Maxo in the chat said that Katarina could impersonate Kobe to uh, exactly yeah. Garp. Like, yeah. Kobe or oh, Ace man. mess with Garp. Like, there's a bunch of things that Katarina. We don't know the extent of her um, mythical zone. Like, can she just turn into anybody she thinks of? Does she have to touch them? I think it's better than Mr. Two Bomb plays. Oh, it's yeah, it's an yeah, upgrade. She yeah. Yeah. For all we know that. Yeah. For all she get their memories. She might get their memories too. Like, that's crazy. That's insane. With the yeah. Katarina the Bond thing, the touching thing, we saw with Higurashi, she had his fruit, but Bond Clay had to like touch his face to transform, but yeah, touching, like, Higurashi yeah. didn't need to do that. So it might even be that these fruits have like levels where she might not even be able to need to see them. Maybe she needs to see a bounty. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah. 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 No, yeah. it's it's not not powerful. Yeah. Like you just brought up the idea that maybe she's going to transform into Ace to potentially mess with Garp. And it's like, could you imagine if we see a retcon? Yes. Like one panel of Marine Board where Katarina Devon with Blackbeard got there, like touched the corpse of Ace. Is that what it is? That would be so, so guys, be a retcon. I'd be okay is, with that. I'd be like, all right. Yeah, hey, oh Garp Master, just that's the before she has a free in the past. Right, right, right exactly. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so guys, I want to take a moment to... Uh, I want to take a moment to Let me live. introduce a Reverie newcomer. All right, we have Dawn of the World hey. in the chat. Hi. Hey, Dawn. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Welcome. 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 Okay, I'm going to leave. Got more Aussies in the chat now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Australian AM crew. <laughs> what's, the time, what's the time there right now? Yeah, it's like 5, 6. 7 AM. Oh, oh, 7. Yeah. Oh, oh, early squad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, no. Dawn, you know. Welcome, welcome. We're talking about uh, the Blackbeard uh, pirates, you know, where they could be, uh, who the ally on Egghead is, whatever your thoughts are, you know, just go ahead and jump in. Oh, that's a great topic. Um, is he I don't have anything me? really particularly prepared to say at the moment, but I'm happy to chime in. All you right. Guys, you doing what you're doing? Uh, well, then how, about, how, are your, how are your current thoughts on everything since one? Loaded question. Yeah, very loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking on the Loki like, oh, this didn't come up yet. Yeah. That's been so simple. Yeah, like, wait, Dream's wait, still wait, alive. Wait, 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 Not dead yet. Yeah. Egghead is that, like, very few people expected he was going to go somewhere. We need to hit a power pit. Exactly like that then. Everybody's saying, you know, Elbaf or, or Think Pipe. Oh, I got a stun like too. But I'm just like, or, or, yeah, and people are expecting to come to the party but... I guess there's a feeling of, oh my gosh, this thing is happening. It's, it's, it's actually How much happening. HP? And like every single chapter has been fire. So yeah, I'm just really excited to see what's to come. 
it's like a dawn of a new world or something like that. I get it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. Uh, 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 maybe we should do a, I don't know, subject, alter, change, whatever, whatever you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> You can remember, yes. Oh, my favorite. No. We, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need for it. That one, the camera for me. I, I, I made too many bets. The camera's going off for this one. I, my camera. I'm not. Okay. I, I'm gonna live. Go ahead. I accept what we have. I'm listening, but I'm not speaking oh, yeah. on this one. Yo, where, the care fans. Hey, care fans. Fuck. Who's playing for care fans? Hey, care fans, y'all been really quiet, man. Where are y'all? Where are the care fans? We got chapter after chapter. Where are the care fans? 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 Okay. Okay. She's in the barrel next to Carrie Bowl. She's in the barrel next to Carrie Bowl. All right. All right. So the 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 Carrie Bowl. We've got we've got no uh, towns either do this. Probably. Uh, the, 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 the chat is saying that the carrot fans are on life alert right now. <laughs> yes. Um, that is like spinning. Spinning. That is spinning. That is spinning. That is spinning. Matt, that is spinning. it looked like you wanted to say something. It looked carrot like fans in the mud. They are just in the mud. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Hold on. They are going through it. No, we're doing fine. We're doing fine out here. We're good. For sure? I mean, I got to story. I mean, you're all the same place as Yamato fans like me, so don't worry about it. Hey, both of y'all can take it all together. It's cool. I'm about to say, I'm just Let's hold off on that for a second, bro. No. Let's hold off on that. What you can do, honestly, I have 1% of the whole game still left. The reason why Matt is not worried is because when they get to season 8 of the One Piece live action, right, you could change history. We could change the story a little bit. Karen actually joins the crew. There we go. We're there. No matter what. Oh, when does the update then? Listen, Roger, yeah. every time the discussion new crew members life. comes up, I always bring up you because I single handedly blame uh, you for the merit supremacy. I forgot. I told the Oral Jackson, Planet yeah. Worst Gen, the One Piece community as a whole. But as it stands right now, Carrot is essentially Schrodinger's cat. The last time we saw her, she was in a situation of she could leave or she could stay. So until until we get confirmation, Carrot could actually still join the crew. I, I will. As a Carrot hater, as a pure Carrot hater, I'm willing to say Carrot has more of a chance of joining right now than Yamato. And Luffy and she's actually on the road to blood in my eyes. You can't see it. This is a 8 p.m. of a whole kingdom. So silver. Is now the Eight thirty. I have to kill another hour and a half. Silver, you have to let it go, Silver. It's a dead dream. I'm sorry. It's a dead dream. Silver, just look to your right. You're good. See, you're good. What we know now, based on everything else in the story, is that dreams become reality via devil fruits. So one day. One no, day there will be a no. carrot fanboy, carrot fanboy, no me that gets created because someone had the goddamn dream to make carrot a straw hat. That individual must be the one to the as soon as possible. If we want a carrot to go out by drowning, that's going to be the first person. Okay, we need to erase their existence for sure. That's what I'm saying. I need carrot out of here. Where's him? Yo, Randy. Can't do it. I will accept any of my bringing Ace back to life before. I don't think you have the facilities for that. Any any of my Momo crew? The Coke Coke crew. Coke, 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 Coke. That's, <laughs> That's definitely the Coke Coke food, actually. Oh, Coke, Coke, no me, man. <laughs> Yeah, let it go. Let it go. So, 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 so. <laughs> Carol didn't even get to say goodbye. Like, goodbye. Yeah, no, that was, that's why I was happy. These guys are so happy. Oh, no. Oh, oh, so so Carol also barely like said hi like during, during Wano. The less Carrot, the better. That's how I see it. I agree with you. <laughs> I feel that way about I feel that way about Yamato. Anyone notice that people just stopped talking about Yamato ever since the arc ended? It must be. Yeah, everyone, everyone, was everyone, was like, oh, everyone was like, oh, she's gonna join. She's gonna join. Oh, guys, look at this. Look at this One Piece towel that featured all the One Piece characters. It is. It is. It is. A towel. It is. I dropped my heartbeat. Where y'all at? I was trying to. I was trying to deal. Uh, Yamato was this in-depth character that everyone thought was the perfect crew member. The moment Yano ends, this in-depth character. Who? Can you say that Oda was not setting Yamato up from the very beginning to join the crew up until that last that, that last no, no, there were valid reasons why she didn't join. My in fact, in fact, a year ago in the conversation, my hands are up. I'm just saying. Fact, there were valid ago, reasons why she wasn't going to join. Okay, okay, I have the receipt. Okay, okay, taking into account, like not taking into account the subtext that everybody was reading into. Every word out of out of Yamato's fucking mouth was, "I'm joining oh, the crew." Yeah. Even up, even towards the end, Luffy said, "Yes." Everything, everything was set up. All she needed to do was set foot on the sun. 
There was nothing yeah. stopping her. But nothing. There was extra context to it because Dan Morch. Morge made a video like way before we even got that conclusion, and he used a lot of valid reasons as to why she wasn't going to join. Uh, yeah, like, it's easy to just ignore me. Yeah, I'm going to say, like, I got the I got the receipts really, a year ago. I was saying this. She's never going to join. And I was saying the reason was because of the identity crisis. The only reason she wants to join is because of the Odin stuff. Exactly. Yeah, but, but, but the thing is, you talk about the stuff that happened with Odin. Odin had to go look around Wadamus to see what things were before going to the actual world. Because think about this. You're putting someone that's isolated, someone who's a neat, someone who's stuck in the house all the time, asking them, let's go on adventures, go travel the world and stuff. You're gonna, not going to expect that person to get hit with what's going on. They have to start from baby steps. Yeah, you know, the house, walk, look, the, found the block or something. And then yeah, you, and you have to remember, you have to remember what Luffy yeah. said. The day that you, Kinemon, and Momo decided to come to Pirates, I will come here and come collect you. So the but, invite is still there. That's my only copium. No, I agree with that. I think that the thing about her like, needing to go around Wano, though, is the fact that before Odin's execution, she was free to roam Wano all she wanted. In fact, there's nothing to say that she wasn't roaming around Wano because she was at the execution, and as soon as Odin died, she made a mad dash for, for um, what is it, Curry? Curry? Curry, yeah. She knew yeah. exactly where it was. She made a mad dash for the palace. She my, my, my opinion, my other opinion is that she's the like guardian of Wano. Yeah, that Momo's trying to. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. The garden makes more sense. Yeah, but, but what Momo said too also made valid point is that they themselves need to step up and not rely on others to be able to take care of things. Yeah, because if you're going to rely on Yamato the entire time and say somebody comes in and bodies her because they're going to be stronger characters out there, what are they going to do? So their military might themselves, they have to build that. I mean, it's been called into question. They, we've come around and said, like, the samurai don't look impressive based on what we've seen in the story, yeah. despite what was said previous in time. So if there's a time to make amends on that and show that they could actually be strong, then yeah, now's the time to do that. But you can't do that with Yamato. Yamato's whole thing is separate to their whole thing. It's that for me to find out myself, I got do all these things but in the meantime of doing that i am protecting them but eventually one day yeah. you gotta let them go let them be free and that time's gonna come eventually I, when it's gonna happen i think my whole thing about yamato I, staying I, in wano is the fact that she she said that she's staying there because if somebody else like green bull was to come into wano somebody needs to be here to help fend him off help send him off yeah look at what green bull did to yamato plus the people who were able to challenge kaido if somebody who is strong enough to actually get into wano see luffy's flag there and not give any kind of shit that yeah. see that this is luffy's territory what difference is Yamato gonna make? Especially yeah, but, seeing a big difference. How she's there to be somebody like me. The, the thing is, the problem with Yamato I'm is Aishi, that so I, I, think like, like, I think there's something she, that Yamato not joining the crew makes sense narratively, and it made sense all along. And if anything, I actually prefer Yamato as someone who is important to Wano and the story of Wano rather than a crew member because I think he's yeah. telling the story. Mm. The problem is just the fact that they kept saying like, "Yeah, Yamato's going to join." Yamato's gonna join. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the problem right from the there. start so. simply introduce Yamato as a character to Wano, makes Yamato's role play out, and that's it. Boom, that's all. That would have worked great, but it's the fact that Odin insisted yeah. up until the end, until he just did it. You know. I think yeah. so. Yamato also has Basically. a duty prior to traveling, and that was what she said. I would give my life to keep Momo alive. But what we also have to remember is before she read Odin's journal, it was Odin's direct words and, and his mission, essentially, that he passed on that still is not completed yet. That was passed on. And Odin's last words were, stay on Wano and open it up for Joy Boy. And that hasn't happened yet. So that was the dying words Odin heard, I mean, Yamato heard from Odin himself prior to seeing the Bible that she sees, right? So I think the way it is is that Yamato has the prior, you know, mission that Odin passed on that the scabbards haven't completed, Momo hasn't completed, no one has completed yet, that has to be completed. That, after that, that's when Yamato can be, that's when, when Laz is saying, like, he, she can join the crew, whatever, all of that jazz, that can all happen. But first and foremost, it's Odin's dying words that she yeah. has to complete. Yeah, I agree with but you. So and it's, it's, those, it's those things, it's that very reason that I do think that Yamato still is the crew. So, like, well, but don't forget, it was intentional that Yamato she had the guardian deity crew. Go on, Jay. The guardian yeah, deity was yeah. joining the crew. Like, like, in general, Yamato joining the crew doesn't make sense. Because uh, as a character and its character depth, to have the character depth to join Straw Hats, Yamato doesn't have that yet. There's a huge, well, that's a, there's a huge yeah. character team. resolution that needs to happen for but Yamato but, to but even be a relevant too, character on the crew. But that, but team, Odin, that Odin cosplay thing, it can't be okay. a factor on the straw hat. But Jay, you have to look at it too. You guys, but you got to look at it from what happened we saw in the story, like with Robin. When she had like, you know, she joined the crew initially and stuff. Yeah, she was still like her clothes off, reserved and everything. And oh yeah. Now she became exposed to what the straw were doing. She eventually was able to open up her personality. In the case for Yamato, you are creating something. Because think about it. Yeah, she has been doing the whole thing with Odin and stuff, but that's because of the environment that she was locked up in. That that's what she had to go off of. She wasn't able to build up herself. You put her in the open world, she's gonna be seeing things different things are going to make shift whatever her personality is going to be afterwards that's why i do think that opportunity to put them on the crew would open up a new avenue that's something that has never been done on the straw hats in one time because everyone else have had personalities all they needed was a reason to go on the ship and actually make something themselves on a further level this is starting from ground zero the only thing i would come back is that with robin Oda had already given us a hint that she could change at the very end of alabasta when luffy was um underground after he just beat crocodile you saw robin's real nature there she's always been there yamato doesn't have an identity outside of Odin. 
that is a huge issue when it comes yeah, to being charged because Luffy wants though. people but outside to have of their own identity. Away from right, Hulk, but, how often would that Odin would that Odin complex? Yeah, because yeah, eventually you would unravel from that. You would move on. You still do the mission of whatever it was that you want to do for Odin, but at the same time, you find yourself along the way. That's the whole part of what a journey is. She but I would say Odin would have to leave a hint. To actually go I would have to leave a hint that Yamato needs journey. to go through that like internal journey. And Odin has sometimes, to leave a hint. Sometimes leave you find that, that when you're going out into the world. Yeah, sometimes you don't need that in the moment. You really got to look at Yamato's whole backstory was she was locked away for years, and then she read the journal for years. Wait, that guy, that exact idea about learning to be far off the journey was perfectly set up for Carrot. What was really interesting about Carrot is she was a character who we saw the opening of her eyes and the formation of her of her dream in the present day story. It was a typical straw hat. Oh, I screwed myself. In the present day, we got to see it with everything from her traveling with them to Pedro and all of that. That it was such an interesting opportunity that just made sense for her to continue on. She has a purpose. She has an inherited will. She has a dream. She was trying to follow. She's the perfect new candidate. At that so particular I'm, time in the get, story, at, at, at that particular time in the story, I was 100 percent with you. I'm going for the Amato discussion. That's what my hands are up for. I'm going back. I just want to point out. I had to take Yo, off the shoe because it's getting too hot in here. That's all I got to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, a little bit spicy. It, 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 it kind of flexing right now. I ain't gonna lie. To you. <laughs> so the uh, what Matt said about Carrot is exactly right. You know, and I feel like that was that was the community after you know during, especially at the end of Whole Cake and after Whole Cake. It was like this seemed like it was a done deal. The problem with with Carrot for me was always just in Wano, Oda decided not to utilize her. He, Super he, background. He, he 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 chose to have her rejoin with the Minx and spend ninety nine percent of her time with the Minx. So by the end of it, I wasn't surprised that she wasn't you know coming along. She should have played a role in things like helping the Straw Hats at Yasuie's execution. She should have she should have been in key moments, yeah, maybe on the road to. Uh, she should have been a part of the, the breakout at Udon or something. She should have stayed with the Straw Hats. Yeah, yeah, Oda so wanted to do that. Part of the you know that band yeah. I, I wanted in Wano and I did not get. Carrot should have put her girl in the ground. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it, it doesn't help either. So Carrot's going to body her and Wanda. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, the, the thing that I wanted to cool, say is that I feel, I feel the moral of the story here is that Carrot fans and Yamato fans spend so much time fighting against each other that they both end up okay. losing the war. And I think the moral here is that there's no point to fight because both sides are going to be losing at the end. Let's just no draw, I, right? I want to the best power archer. That's what makes it great. Because oh. if, if you don't like either of them, you just, you just love watching them. Right. So here, here's the and fight. minimal I mean, damage. You've got to be careful about generating excitement. If you're going to make fans excited, then you've got to deliver on that. And exactly. the moment that Yamato uh, telegraphed that she was going to become a new remember she doesn't have to be a new crew member but it plants the idea in people's heads that we're going to get one and they obviously are thinking it's going to be young it doesn't have to be but it has to be someone it has to it has to equal the level of the fight which is yeah. really didn't, you know. and, and, and ever since that whole thing happened jb i've wondered if oda was on fraud watch and then we've been on egghead weekly and he's been bringing out fire so thank you oda a lot if of times we, we can all like... turn our attention to uh to, to matt's screen here see silver's no, we got oh. silver's the right one right there good job man big goat <laughs> like a big goat to me She's in the barrel. What did I say? <laughs> right you, next man. to Carrie. Boy. Chilling. She coming out like the next Luffy. Ah! Okay. Nice. <laughs> Our zero <laughs> build is getting better. Like <laughs> 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 that barrel fire. What you mean, though, Dagger? That is <laughs> y'all are crazy. I can't we do it slow over here, mates. Hey, but all this aggression <laughs> over money. <laughs> over money. <laughs> hey, but in all honesty, I'm just I'm just pouring one out to finally giving up on the discussion. There we go. There you go. And you'll be, you'll be back so, in thirty minutes. Nobody, <laughs> nobody brought this up. I'm, I'm curious what people think. Do you think that Oda might have had a plan to make someone join the crew and then yes. have to yes. somewhere? Yes. I definitely think that was the case. Yeah. That is, that is the one case. thing I will say about all of this, about the Yamato thing, is I definitely feel like there was a point in the story in which he was going to make Yamato the next straw hat, and then I think he changed his mind somewhere down the line throughout the course of Wano, and that's what led to this point. Because, again, like, I made my bed, I lied in it, I took my L, that's fine. But there were so many cues that I thought were even more clear than the carrot stuff with yeah, Yamato, with, with like, even even in terms of, like, what Yamato's role in the crew would be, being described, like, telling the journey of the story, going to left, like, there was so much that was there that I do think there was a moment yeah. where it was like, I don't want to deal with all this drama, I'm done with this, and then Yamato's just not going to join now. I do think there was, a, that could have happened, I think. Yeah. I think it's yeah. not a, it's a non-zero chance, but I, 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 I think he could also throw in some bars. mitts as well. Yeah, and that, you know, and that's, and that's I love the one thing that could have been a scribe of ours. Or I, I think like the, the irrelevance of the role of the scribe, because we already have Brooke telling the story as a musician, I think is another thing that may be added to it as well, too. I'm right there with you. Uh, yeah. But I, I do you, feel you like there were just, yeah, they look out with the character. Exactly. Yeah. My thing is that Oda is such a fantastic... Oh no, I was just but, gonna say that if, if I saw Yamato taking up any position, by the end of Wano, I think the crew and the world would have officially recognized Zoro as the vice captain and Yamato would have just taken up the position. At this point in yeah. the story, we we run out of position of crew positions that we actually need and now we're just filling up like extra spots. Like we still don't have there's um there's another position in the series that we've seen that we don't, still don't have for the trial. That's one of them is a vice captain. Um another one's a ship guard, which is like Zong Scoob. We're in trouble now. Yeah, outside, outside that, that's we, thirty. We filled every other position. So the only one of those that I really agree with. Yeah, I would. I would have liked an approach. That would be something like I think with Momo. Momo say like he wanted to yeah. tell the world stuff. That maybe Momo would make more sense, or even like Tama. Because that's what I want to talk about. Yeah, I would have been cool with Tama. But Tama joined with all of them. My thing also with the Grand Fleet introduction, like now that Luffy has that and what he told those captains, essentially anybody who has like their own dream, they could just join the Grand Fleet. And then the other thing about it is that when we look at with the way Luffy has brought people off his crew, even if it was like, like against their will, it was just kind of like, what, look at Brooke, he's just like, hey, join my crew. So it's gonna be like a random yeah. individual person, if there is gonna be somebody, someone who doesn't have like responsibilities outside of it, or something that like meshes well with what Luffy wants. So to like go back to what Joy was asking, like did Oda open up this like vague spot? I think, yeah, I think that's how, like that's the Oda way with everything in the story, right? That's why we're having all these discussions. And, but now that we have the Grand Fleet, I think we can limit, uh, limit who's the potential person because a lot of the people who could join could just join the grand fleet and then it'd be sort of underneath Luffy yeah i just remember like when i did the uh, yamato video about a year ago i remember talking about like what role that yamato would have had should have joined because i know i see what roger was talking about you know brooks i know the story and stuff but he's a musician to me i think the ideal one within the chronicler is something similar to what we see with odin has done with the roger pirates and the white pirates like writing down all the things that are going on like literally she would be the one that's writing the story of one piece because she's collecting all the notes from previous journeys that she had learned while now being on the current time and actually my first turn was my best turn to use so, my strength so, so, I, I, if i could be honest yeah. i gotta use more than maps no, no, no that's a, a chronicler or a logman is more so is more so than happy the official logbook yeah, 
give me a lot of hits. Yeah, I think that you could also like signify it, to, signify it to where it's like there's an actual person that should be doing that. Because I can't, I, to me, like I don't believe like Zoro's writing down stuff. Like Sanji, he's writing down stuff. He's writing down for recipes. Can Zoro? Like, that's the best. Oh, no, like, can can read. Read. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come on. So like, everyone can have their own thing. I think that would be cool to do. Otherwise, like, we just make like everyone try to read it. Yeah. Zoro tries to write. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> like you know, true. If I can be. If Oda uh, was the master that I think we mentioned before is that Oda has had a specific like a different yasai for future perspective. Oh things like they don't just go and like some characters like Frank and <sighs> Oh. But it's like by the start of school he had like an idea of like even just like EG movies, you know, doing the tool or just like a like occasion and specifically and like this stuff and this thing. Or Yamato has not been the case, I know that you mentioned recently that Yamato's literally a, a character who almost out of his own will of, of the, you know, her own will just appeared in the story just all of a sudden and just manifested you know herself onto the show that way and i'm kind of like wondering that regard if that's something that oda still was kind of convinced but then he wasn't convinced or he's kind of like stood in the middle of all that 420 yeah, to be real, I, I, my thing with you know it's just the way that oda writes is that there's usually so much more uh you know the good amount i should go to one of the buy stations and i feel like the way yamato came into the story they really should have been foreshadowed in act one or two uh, and then, and, and Oda also is, is such a, he's such a, he's so deliberate with the way that he crafts his story and like the way that endings are, you know, that's, that's the one thing that I, I, I love about Oda. And I, you know, I say it all the time. It's like, if you're going to, if you're going to write something and you have no idea what the ending is going to be, you don't write it because you're just, you know, you just, sure you can, you know, it's not the, the, the case of figuring it out along the way. You're supposed to be building towards that the entire time. Like you should know what that is. Oda has always said, I know what the ending to the story is. And he's been building, he's been taking us on this journey. When I got to the end of Wano, I was a little confused and I was wondering if something got in the way. Like, did someone get, did, was there something here where there was a path and then it didn't happen that way? Like, I don't know. Uh, you know, a lot of the times, though, we have to be honest, there's, like, fan-made agendas. Like, let's be honest, a lot of, like, people will come together and really push something, and that might not, even though they believe that'll happen, it might not even be Oda's vision, then they get upset. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah I, I'll be real, I don't think Yamato exactly, was ever, Jay, I don't think Yamato thank was you, ever part you. of the plan, because, uh, and this is to build off of what Randy was saying, I don't think she was ever part of the plan. Um, it's just, like, imagine, like, we're, like, 80% of the way through the LVAP arc, and then all of a sudden, we meet a character named Banks, and he's Shanks' kid, and he, uh, he also has, like, Conqueror's Hockey, and also he's connected, he has a past with Sabo that we never learned about, and then, like, it's all this stuff getting thrown on us last second, and then we're like, oh, yeah, and also, this guy's gonna join the crew now, and it's like, <laughs> it's like, is this the same time, like, are, yeah. like, like, we're reading two piece now, Banks? Yeah, yeah. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll the longer into the end of the game we get, the more difficult it's going to be to introduce someone who could be a yeah, new crew member. Because like they're going to feel like it's coming out of nowhere. That's again, yeah. she's been an agenda. Yeah. She's been with our people for such a long time that it didn't feel random. It didn't feel last yeah. minute. It felt like it was something like random. It's that we're building towards. Yamato felt very thrown in. And I think that's part of why some anti Yamato people feel the way that they do. Because it's like, wait, what the fuck? Who is this person all of a sudden that's coming in out of nowhere talking about joining this? I just met you, my guy. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> right. like, yeah, I will say, I will say one thing. That's why I'm team GB. That's why I'm team GB. Now, I don't, I don't think we're going to get enough. Stronger. I think we're so close yeah. to the end game that it will feel so last like minute. Like, we're, yeah, that's we're, we're making, not we're making. Vivi's kind of coming back. I feel like Vivi is the final <laughs> straw hat, right? Yes. Because that, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Vivi will right. complete everything. Right. 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 Oh, shout out to King of Lightning. King of Lightning's in here, my guy. Welcome, King. Hey, Chris. Brother King. Hey, how's it going today? Hey, Brother Jay, how we doing, yo? Hey, how's everyone doing today, yo? Yo, hey, hey, bro, fantastic. Good, bro. Oh, we have a full house. My goodness, yo. First of all, shout out to yo, Roger, yo. God, dude. Thank you. I was Thank concerned, you. yo. I really was, man. The streets were worried. Yeah, 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 yeah. yo. Right. Right. I was right. right. with Roger. Oh, my God, the milk car, man. The church of Tata Curry, I rose from the ashes. We were like, we were like, if they got Roger, bro, we're all in trouble, dog. Yeah, yeah. No, we would have to raise our banners to Roger. We would have to raise our banners to Roger. Straight up and simple. I don't want to wait to the box. Let's get this one. We are on the front lines for Roger. Of course, I'm just having fire on that about that. Shout out to him. Always, forever, always. I might just have to start hacking. Yeah, yeah. We, we might have to learn to hack and just hack the hackers back at this point. Mm. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm I got three steps out. You know, you're trying to make a few calls. All right. <laughs> 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 He's waiting. 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 Uh, no, 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 I was not a casual. I was a Yamato supporter. I was, I was big on Yamato. Huge on Yamato. Um, Cold um, culture. Yeah, but I mean, listen, I, I think Oda, I think it was like, like during like that month break, I think Oda decided then. Well, I actually drew it. Yamato off the story right now. Because Oda has always had the whole 
like I'm gonna have the story like what three years, two years, whatever it's gonna be. Yeah, that's and Yamato being the story just kind of takes up a lot of like time, like because every character needs their like like their shine, their focus, their ability, that kind of stuff. And yeah. then I think also in part two, personally speaking, Jinbei's still kind of fresh in my mind. Like it, it feels kind of yeah, like you still those interactions, right? Like, like he was there in Wano, like Wano, he was there. He felt like an actual strong like the first time. In Hokkaido Island, he was like kind of like on the fence ish, like not like yeah. he was there, but like you know we're not sure exactly. He still so signed the love. Right, and so nobody in my head is here to steal the light now. Uh, yeah, yes, but I don't, I don't think so. No, I, don't I kind of think I don't think it's not. Wait, what, right what do you guys say to the people Vegapunk for Nakama? That would be so interesting. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. no, 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 no. He's going to sail with us. He's, he's going to sail with us. He's going to hell with us. Not permanently. Not permanently. If anything, the real thing to hell about is like the safety reason. Yeah, right. I could honestly see Vegapunk dying. We're in another drought of, like, eventually. We're we're in the we're in the we're in the process of like and that and like that discussion of like when people say Caesar, we're in that point we're in that point of the Lunar discussion where there's absolutely nobody who is viable as candidates, so people just latch on. Facts. I also think like Facts. when it comes to like these characters, people want them back. But like you know, with VV, we had a huge send off that like still I can remember panel by panel, image yep. by image. And Momo didn't really get that, and I I, I was pretty upset about that. Like it didn't feel like that, and a lot of people made the parallels there. But in my mind, I also see it like the story is going to end soon, and these Wano characters are going to come back. There's no way Oda builds up the entire story to Wano, yeah. and then we're gonna you know the. the the borders, the borders aren't borders open. Yeah, borders yeah. aren't open. We don't know about Pluton. Momo's now an adult. We saw it for like one panel. They're, these characters are going to come back one way or another. Yeah. And when that time comes, we'll see what kind of shine Oda wants to put on them. So does Oda want to give Yamato more shine than Yamato or Momo? But like, I think that's, you know, because BV was what, t 10 years ago? That's why there was like the emphasis on Arabasta. Oda's like, okay, we're not going to deal with BV for a while. Here's the big send off. I was remember it. But Wano didn't maybe need as much because we'll probably get it in like a year and a half, two years, like an update yeah. on these characters. Whether it's since a cover story. Too, so. Yeah, yeah, cover story or actually affecting the yeah. plot of like the main manga, you know. So yeah. that's the way I see it. With these I think it'll be nice to see as well. So it's like we're not completely removed from if the idea is for her to come back is that we get like a cover story seeing like the adventures of Yamato like going there for maybe it's like five chapters like in the cover story just seeing those little things. I think that would be cool as well to get. So that way it's like she's throwing back in there and then we're back to the turmoil of oh I don't want her in there, I want her in there and stuff. Where we're actually she's doing the things she's supposed to be doing, traveling, seeing the world for itself within Wano and then being in the opportunity to go when Star decided to come back like later on down the line. So, uh, so guys, we've been on this topic for quite some time, and I want to move from it. And the chat wants to move from it as well. Um, and um, I, I want to, you know, since Matt, since you're here, you know, obviously there's, you know, there's NDAs, and we've got everybody in the, you know, in the chat asking about it. Uh, the season one of the of the live action has wrapped, right? Is yes. there is there a favorite moment of yours that you would like to share with with everybody you know either from the production or anything that that really sparks some joy because we're all excited about it. i will say i think my favorite character in the live action is me hawk <laughs> big hawk i i will say that Okay. Wow. Okay. Let me say that. I've tried. I, my lips are. I will be. I, I will be there no matter what. <laughs> I will say. Roger's hurting right now. I, yeah, I don't. I will say. Roger can't say anything either. I can't say anything either. But I will say. I understand why Matt is saying that. Mm. But I will also say, and I think this is safe, Matt, because I, I wouldn't want to do anything. I will also say that I think there is a story arc that when we get to it, people are going to be very impressed with how that story arc turns out and looks in live action. My mind was blown and Reagan's mind was blown when we were walking around the set of this particular thing. And I have, I was so unbelievably impressed by this one specific story arc and what was done for it that I'm like, oh yeah, I got complete faith now. So I Matt, I mean this, I know you can't say this, but I will say this for you. That in particular is gonna be fire. I can't wait to see it. Why do I feel like I know what it is? I have like a weird guess. I know you're oh, not yeah. gonna tell. My, I can't say it. I know you can't tell. Or shout, or shout. Not, you know, Netflix is watching. Say, have to say a guess. Say anything, but I have to say a guess, and you gotta no. turn off your camera. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> bro, this cipher is in the <laughs> TV, bro. I'm out. Exactly. So now that they're off camera, I'm gonna guess and say it's Sanji's art. But. You know, you can, you can, you guys can decide. You know, I'm sure Village Heat. I, I, I don't know. I think, I think it's Baratier, man. I think it's Baratier. Wait, Matt, can I ask you a question, Matt? Are we safe now? Are we good? Are yeah. you guys done? Yeah. I think so. All right, cool, 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 cool. Matt, Matt, come back. Right. I have a question for you. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. He's here. So, so I think like a lot of the chat, like, you know, I've, I've talked about the live action. People bring it up every once in a while. I think right now in relevance, like on TikTok, I think specifically it's going 
a little bit viral was uh, Taz. Like he's doing like martial yeah, arts yeah. and he looks Shaza, like Sanji acting, like he's method acting. I think like that's something people don't understand. And in the conversation I had with you, it was like everybody on the the set is a huge One Piece fan. Like every single person, Emily Rudd, for example, at uh, uh, Anime NYC, Shaza. spent the entire day, like literally twelve hours without crazy asses talking about One Piece. <laughs> up until like four a.m. at a bar. Like who does that? Only a One Piece fan. And like I think. Like, I, I don't know if the chat really recognizes how much of a One Piece fan, not just like the actors, but everyone. And you were everyone. saying that. Like, I don't know if there's like more to that. Like you only had like two minutes to tell me about that. Every, look, everyone, everyone who works on this show loves One Piece, whether they were a fan before or they became a fan while working on it. And yeah, you see it in that, like the, the dedication that cast and crew everyone has is out of control. Like you're talking about Taz, Taz was taking cooking lessons. Yeah. Taz is, he has moved door, up right? in all of his his he's taekwondo trade. Like he does that, he's yeah. still doing it. Um, the dedication that the cast has to the show and to their characters and to really getting into their heads and portraying them correctly is it, it can't be understated. These people are working really, really hard. And that goes for like the editors and everybody off the screen as well too. Yeah. Like you were mentioning everything. Everybody. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, even without again getting too specific, like walking around behind the scenes and meeting the actual like crew involved with the show and then having them bring up things that were like in our videos like theories that we're talking about video i'm like this is amazing you guys are like actually in tune with the community this is really really cool so yeah and everyone was so friendly and I, oh god it just like the sets were beautiful yeah it's gonna be cool i mean matt you mentioned uh taz but like taz refused to like have a stunt actor and wanted to do like all these like, yeah he wanted to be bold yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So he wanted to do as much of it as possible yeah, I love that. Matt, Matt, I love I hearing it. I have a question in regards to the casting for Zoro. How bad did you just take it? You guys look into the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the fan cast. <laughs> and, uh, the fan, fan casting has been really interesting. The fan casting has been really and continue to be. Like people talking about future seasons and stuff. Guys, if you want future seasons, watch the show when it comes out. But yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, like, I will be there no matter what. By the merch, too. No doubt. We will definitely be covering. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. We will definitely. Yeah. Hey, everybody, I, I, I appreciate everybody. You know, I appreciate everybody sticking with us and believing in us. You guys have no idea how much it means to everyone. I mean, not just you know, you content creators, chat, everybody. It means so so much to us that you believe in what we're trying to do. Because as I, as I said in the Reverie three years ago, yeah, doing this, doing this for, doing this for Oda Sensei, I'm doing this for you guys. Like, we're we're, we're trying to break the curse here. You know, to add on to that, Matt, like you have to understand, like for us, you don't know how much it means to us for you guys to be as transparent as we have been and to Absolutely, answer questions yeah. and right. show how passionate you are for the story. Yeah. We believe in you because of your transparency, because we know you're a good person. We've met you, we've met Emily, we've met all of these guys. We yeah. genuinely believe in you guys that you guys support us. Speak for yourself, yeah. like you guys like care. Business, you can have an insignificant amount of support that you care. Because all the other live actions, like all the other stuff is like, yeah, they tried their best, but it seems like the way they did it, it seemed like they didn't care about the actual source material. With you guys, yeah. I can clearly see it. So definitely hope we're all the best. I don't want to speak for everybody, but I feel like most of the also, also, I definitely also, 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 Matt has confirmed Conqueror's Hockey. I saw it firsthand at, at, at the bar there. <laughs> you know, he might seem quiet in this call, but let oh me tell goodness. you, you catch him at a bar. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about it's over, man. It's over. It's over. It's over. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Beef, man, I'm so bad at you. Mm. <laughs> you saw, you saw, I thought we squashed that. I we did squash that. I will allow you to have your bad opinions. And we just, we, we just keep it moving. We Clearly, just keep it moving. Clearly, James Stephanopoulos on camera. If you said you give it back. That's that's like it. <laughs> I have a question for Matt, if I could ask. Um, I, ju I just wanted to know from your end, like, because One Piece is a very cartoony story, and the visuals are very cartoony. So um, I know that this is maybe not what you're handling, but like the special effects angle. How, what's the approach that the team is looking at that for? Like, are they looking to go for a more cartoony angle and try and capture that? Or are they gonna kind of like make it more realistic and make it kind of more grounded in reality from compared to the manga or the anime? Like what's the, um, what's the approach? I think it depends on what you're talking about. The world is going to look like the One Piece world. Sure. That's, what, that's what it is. Are our characters going to have razor sharp teeth when they get mad? No, we're not, we're not doing that, but the, the elements of the One Piece world that make this what it is, we're not shying away from those things. Okay, well, that's a good answer. I, 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 was, I wanted to say, I found on my phone I was looking for it, because you had brought it up. Uh -oh. The night when we were all at that bar, and Jake yeah. mentioned the thing with Hunter Hunter. I don't know if you guys can see this. Oh, look at that, brother! Look at it! Oh, <laughs> the microphone up! Uh, what is it? Let's see, full screen, full screen. Look at it. Okay. Okay. Let's see if it zooms in. <laughs> So we're yelling about Hunter at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Emily said I love Hunter Hunter, so there you go. <laughs> we got somebody working on it. 
Emily Rudd also has Taco Taki, by the way. Nami. Nami has Taco Taki. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. My my biggest excitement for everything, though, is just the amount of people that can be reached and touched with this that are not familiar with it. Or that, or the ones that are just adjacent, you know, for everybody that's in the chat, for all of us, like uh, anybody that's got parents that you know may watch a Netflix show that that you know aren't going to watch, or you know the anime or read the manga, you know, someone that wants to have their significant other understand a little piece of what you know has just taken over their lives, you know, in the way that One Piece does for us, the accessibility of what Mav and, and his team are, are doing. That's that's going to give that for all of us. Yeah, we, they, they, yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't mean. I'm just saying Netflix yeah. is a huge deal, man. Like, yeah, oh yeah. The, yeah. On a global scale, it's like it's a it's a floodgate. Quite honestly, we should honestly expect the community to change somewhat in the months afterwards, in my opinion, because there will be yeah. more people that are trying to catch up. Oh, yeah. Also, like, yeah, that's we want to be able to use this as an entry point. You know, we've all I'm sure we've all had experiences trying to get people into this who aren't. Or like, how many chapters is it? How many episodes? Yeah, and the it's anime? Gonna, and yeah. So to be able to yeah. offer this as like a new and different entry point, and then be like, "See, now you can jump in. Now you see what we've been talking about. Now go read the manga." Like that's what we're that's what yeah. we're yeah. hoping. Yeah. 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 Don't be surprised if my mom ends up in your comment section, bro. Because like now I'm gonna be checking out this stuff. Every every few months, my dad popped up a, a video. Like bro, I saw bro, you bro, live bro. talking about the thing. I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't, real I don't story, know. story, real story. So yeah. so yeah. family friend of ours, an older uh, like mom like figure for me. Uh, found my channel for the first time and she commented on my YouTube and she she got responded to by the Mr. Joy Boy scam in the comments. Oh no! <laughs> wow. Follow me on Telegram for a free away. giveaway. Tell yeah, oh, my God, no. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh, is that coach? Is that shout, coach? Out to, shout out to yeah. my guy, King Recon, the coach, Welcome, joining us in the fourth quarter. That's Recon, no doubt, no doubt. Happy to be here, man. It's a pleasure. Uh, the, yeah. the last thing I'll say, and then we can move on. What's the yeah. today? Uh, uh, the team. Thank the you, team. everybody, for thank you, everybody, for sticking with us. I know that it's been Perma a life still build, build baby, anything, but you will have something new to see very soon. Probably being older right now. Trailer. Okay. Don't okay. okay. the comment. Jump <laughs> fast. <laughs> 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 now, if this is a battle right now. <laughs> I will have it. I will have it. I will have it. You have a joy boy. Is that a joy boy? Hey, that's the enemy. Joy boy. Joy is AJ right now. Hold on. He's the marine Brandon with the glasses. Agent JB out here. Agent JB. Agent JB. All right. So shout out to that. Uh, that's wonderful. We're gonna have some news. I want to say one thing. Uh, if I can, yes. something that I would like to take this opportunity to mention, and I want you to corroborate, Matt, is I think this is something that a lot of people are vastly underestimating why I brought it up, and it's how involved Oda is with this project. Because a lot of yeah. people think like, yeah, he kind of like jumbly checks, but it's like Oda checks very directly, and he's reviewed all the scripts and you know, reviewed everything. So can you corroborate that? I can. All right. <laughs> Just so that there you have it. There we go. That's 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 Matt is yes. the yes. wedding right now. The NGA is hanging over there. So, as as always, as always, we have uh, you know we have our, our community which is positive about this, and with you know, and Jay even said it himself, the way the transparency, the way that you know, like Matt and others have involved themselves in the community is what helps have this you know this, this hope for what we're, we can eventually see. So we're we're gonna we're gonna stop the one piece live action discussion there. So um, Matt, you know, doesn't look like the Jordan Peele meme, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but you know we you know we, I feel I hope that everybody in the chat is, is at least satisfied that we did bring up the topic a little bit, despite everything you know with NDAs. This is just the way that things work. The news is not going to get revealed here. You know this is this is not where it's going to be. They're going to control everything the way that they want it to be to be shown for you guys. So I don't have anything set up here to show you that's not that's not what this was going to be. Matt's here to talk about the manga and everything, but I appreciate that's a one piece fan, exactly. exactly. He's here as a One Piece fan. So, but I hope that that you know helped everybody that was asking for stuff. And now joining us, making their Reverie debut as well, is the Volume One Podcast with Yo. with cosplay. <laughs> I love, I love, I love, I love, I love it. Hey. I got a special shout out, by the way, to Volume 1. No, I, I got to give a very special shout out to Volume 1. We have been planning for a year and a half 
for me to do, I see them laughing a bit, for me to do a podcast with them. And literally the week that we scheduled to do the podcast is when my channel got hacked. Oh, 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 a year and a half. So I, I am so, so God, sorry to the Volume 1 podcast money, for not being able to do it. But we're we're going to catch up. We're going to make a date again very, very oh, soon. But like, I felt so, 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 so bad that that hack happened right as we were going to do it. So shout out to them. Love you guys. It's all good. Okay. No, somebody explain That's me. never fun. So, uh, uh, how much more professional they are. Look how much more professional they are. We are all screwed yeah, up. One camera. They have three cameras <laughs> switching back into the switch. I'm not going to have a studio. Really is a girl. You got a camera. Oh, I'm back. 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 Oh, I'm with that oh man, that, that was incredible. That's a big story in the building. <laughs> Almost makes you want to stop. I'm about to see I'm those Hattori emojis right now. I want to see. Wait, I want to see so nothing but Hattori they... emojis. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! Praise be to Pastor Lucci. Pastor Lucci, dude. Uh, so yeah, just to answer your question. We're, you know, we just do a podcast and we caught up on One Piece. Oh shit! Bird down. No, uh, it's <laughs> Abu no. no. We just caught up on One Piece. Like you know, I, I think over the course of last year, we went through all of it and you know, and tried to do as many cosplays as we could throughout. And so it was something that we called our done P series because we want to finish it until it's, you know, completed five years from now, however long, six years from now. Um, and uh, yeah, everybody in the community was so awesome. I mean, we put, you know, as much as we could into dressing up and really making every episode as special um, as we could. And we, we just like fell in love and became so obsessed. Like there's a figure shelf behind me. And over the course of us covering the series, like <laughs> every figure just became a one piece figure and all the other. I'm doing my Epic out, Seven you know, stuff right now. Lives, and we became obsessed with it. And, you know, we met some cool people in the community and it's just been crazy, dude. It's just been amazing. Well, that's just a little bit about us. Uh, I'm happy to have you, man. Megan, also, Megan had the fire theory about Luffy's dream. I remember yeah. saying yep. oh, yep. oh, I'm, I'm also, blushing. I'm blushing. I want to give a special shout out too because like if the chat doesn't know they did a live reaction for when they caught up to like chapter 1044 at end of Wano. They did that one book. Yeah. You guys should go watch yeah. that. And the reason why I'm saying that is because really. because of that reaction, my wife got into it. So now, like, she's always nice. wanted to get into it, but not that specific person. reaction. They were, she was listening in the background and just the things that they said. She, my wife was basically like, "Oh, I'm, I, you know, she, in the back of her mind, she knows I'm a huge One Piece fan, but I have been with One Piece my entire life." So she's like, "Oh, like you've been in with it for your entire life. That's why you love it so much." But they just did it in one year, and to hear their emotions, the crying, the everything. Yeah, Megan was a wreck. I was a wreck. I was a wreck. What was uh, what was my wedding party? My wife hearing <laughs> that reaction, that's all she needed. She's like, if they if this is what it did to them in one year, like I'm I'm so she's and then she immediately started binge watching and reading. So like, shout out to you, thank you so much, Bob. That's awesome. Yeah, part of my part of my uh, Shaka helmet competition, dude. <laughs> uh, he beat me to the Shaka cosplay. I was pretty upset about that, you know, but you know, we let bygones be bygones. Which was also my wife. My wife, you know, <laughs> she did it in a day, and you know, shout outs to her for that. The real boss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is but yeah, just thank you for having us, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Amazing. Honestly, it's, it's been incredibly uh, it's so time, to be here. Long time watcher, first time caller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, this so, is fun. So now the chat's calling me a fraud because I asked what 1044 what? was. I want that to just understand. Put the camera on me. I don't leave my man's alone. Put the camera on me. I don't leave my man's alone. I don't. The only chapter number I will the only chapter number I'll ever remember is 957. That is the only chapter number I'll ever remember. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Favorite chapter. Period. Game over. That's what happened in 957. Ooh, I mean, Garp, you know what I'm saying? Black Fear, Ultimate, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, 956 was better than 957 for me. Oh, boo, nah, big, right. news, oh, big, news, big news, big news, big news. But I'll raise you 1058, though. I'll raise you 1058. 1057. 1044. Let's just throw out chapter numbers like that. Mega fans, like... 1044, 895. Yeah, but like, 1027 was fire, though. I see, I see you in 1069. I raise you a chapter 22. Anyone remember that one? Yeah, I'm on. Favorite One Piece chapter was the friends we made along the way. So, just asking hot takes. So, what actually, this is good. So, Obani One is my first time meeting you guys. Do you guys have a hot take 
from your journey that most oh. people would like. I'm very curious. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel everyone like everyone is trying to get rattled right now. I feel like yeah. I, can have two. I have two really uh, hot takes. Um, I really like Foxy. <laughs> That's not a hot take at all. No, it's not a hot take. Yeah. Yeah. Foxy got haters though. Foxy got haters. I get it. Yeah, he should, but like, and he's still using the baby back fights. Like, he was the man to do it. And we got. Everything comes crashing down around you. Thank you. 